Where was he going again? He said a place on 22, and I'm sure he's not getting it today. I'm oh, sure I'm I'm sure he's getting it tomorrow. At least he better be, otherwise I'm not paying him for that crap. I don't want no cold ZD. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, so start. where's Danielle? I will tell you as soon as we start. Know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you specifics afterwards because we're live now. But I'll, I'll get into the the general discussion. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Three, oh, God. Three, two, one. Go Nintendo Podcast Webisode Nine Twenty. The Low Kicks Podcast. Low kicks. Uh, when low kicks decides to fight all out, it stands on its previously folded legs to enter showdown mode. It neutralizes its enemies in short order. It's three feet tall. It's 38 pounds. It is male and female. It is the grasshopper category, and it has the ability Swarm. Swarm powers up bug-type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low. There you go. That's the Pokemon end Delicious. of Pokemon section. Uh, I am here. Do Michaels is here. Uh, Nikki Hill will be here. I don't know where he is, but he'll be here. Um, We're speaking his name right now. Josh Grobot, the one and only, is here. Josh, how are you doing? I'm here to grace you with my presence. Thank you, as always. Hanging and banging like usual. Thanks. Very cool. Uh, George is here. George Bongiorgno to you. Hmm, well, I'm not a bad name. <laughs> Glad you could join us on this random Friday show. Both of you uh, and you two as well do. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, oddly enough, myself and Do and Nikki Hill and Mom Brain and actually Kirby all have something to do tomorrow during podcast time or close to podcast time. So we are here doing the podcast today because we never oh, miss it. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, my God. Mom Brain is not here with us on today's show because... She had a very, very, very rough day at work. She is upstairs recuperating. She had to go get a uh, concussion hey, test after happened? work today. Uh, I can't get any more, can't get into the specifics on it, but I can tell you the doctor believes she is okay. They said at the very worst, she has a slight concussion. So they gave her a sheet of paper to say, look out for all these things oh, wow. that I needed to read. And I was like, but you're already all these things. It was like very tired and lethargic. And uh, <laughs> I was a whole bunch of other stuff that she is all the time. I was like, what am I supposed to do here? And you she's love like, oh, I'll be fine. So, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I'm horrible. So she called me and she's like, this happened. I got to go get a concussion test, blah, blah, blah. Um, so she got home. And right before she got home, I went to go get the mail. And in the mail uh -huh. was... Uh, Something for the wrong address. And it said the name Abigail on it. So when Mom Brain pulled up in the car, I was outside and I got the door for her and I handed her the mail. And I go, here you go, Abigail. This oh, is no. you. <laughs> I was like, you don't remember, Abigail? This is you. I found it very funny. She laughed too. But uh, so, yes, she's she's OK. <laughs> she's fine. Like she's not fine. She's banged up, but she is fine. She's. Of all her faculties, she's just taking it easy. I said, you know, go upstairs and rest. And that's what she's doing. So she's probably reading, napping, cat sitting on top of her, enjoying TikTok, all that good stuff. Uh, and I believe I heard Nikki Hill get here now. So while he's coming in, let me tell uh, or let me say hello to all the people who joined in for this random show today as it was a surprise. So hello to... Uh, sorry, I was in the wrong channel. Um, hello to Rosemary the Farmer and Solo Master Link and Ghost Pants and Joe Shabadoo and Malik Halo and Steve Irwin and William and Drake and the Super Sanchez. Oh, Malik Halo, that's a great gift. That's really good. Uh, <laughs> Ratsuza, those look amazing. Uh, Gecko Kitsune. Ratsuza says, just systematically, ah, one moored myself into eating all four of these and then i got into bed so if the pot is on i may be asleep during it that's great four chocolate chip cookie sandwiches they look delicious they look heavenly oh what is the front door locked did i lock it uh, uh i leave the show to you you know i asked him if i locked the, the front door after i came in i guess he wouldn't know only i would know uh so Oh, please. I didn't. 
Please, I, I did nothing. Oh, you, do, you guys don't have to. Yeah, so apparently I did lock the door. I wanted all the everything for myself. Was it locked? Uh, we tried our best to keep him out, but he is here. Yes, the door was <laughs> Son locked. Son of a gun. Sorry about that. Uh, well, I'll apologize to him when he walks in. Hi, Tater Talk. Good to see you. Uh, Do I have to Rosemary eat? says we'll be listening later because we're sitting down to eat pizza and start freering. Oh my god, what a combination! Uh, I was listening to the Fear and soundtrack yet again tonight. Uh, uh, Rosemary, if you're still here, tell me where you're at. If you mean you're starting freering from episode one or if you're already watching, there he is. There's Nikki Hill. There's the guy. Sorry, I was the one that locked the door on you. I'll remember that. <laughs> I'll never forget it. At least you'll remember it, because I obviously forgot. What uh, what do you got it was there? Just a punishment for uh, getting here after the start of things. <clears throat> do you want me to do that so you can? No, it? We're, we're wow! Right. These are uh, a perfect mix of George and Josh. They're lime Ooh. jalapeno Ooh. ruffles. They uh, they have that that. Delicious lime flavor with that, uh, the the delicious George lime flavor, with the just the right amount of. Uh, could you please, could you please put one up to my mouth? Um, Hell yeah! Well, mm. let's try them, man. Were you in an airplane? That's lime full of jalapeno. Uh, full of... Can we open these? No, I just brought them here for you guys to look at. Fair enough. Yeah, Fair enough. very nice looking bag. I do want to try one. I like <clears throat> jalapeno and I like lime. I like both, and I like potato chips more than both of those. Malakalo spice. Open it. Malakalo's got it. Lima pino. Lima pino. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because where I live, like you're higher up Elevation, or something. I guess. Yeah. By like twelve feet. I don't After know. that earthquake, who knows? Yeah, we're probably. Let me let me get a smell oh, of that are, bouquet. These are quake chips. Very jalapeno forward. Which I don't know how by how me. you get so much spice out of a a powder. Oh yeah, jalapeno forward, jalapeno it's forward, good. and it and it's a, a winner. It's a perfect amount of lime, I think. Like I agree. Hint, hint of lime. The hint of lime Tostitos, too much lime. It's oh, more than little, a hint. A little spite. Well, not. It got some kick to it when mm. you swallow it. My, That's good, George. They're very good. They're very good. Please, just put the bag in front oh, of my face. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't eat limes. I only carry them. Oh. Sorry Sounds for the good. confusion all these years. I would Bowser. never. <laughs> They're too precious. These are my friends. They have names. That's great. Oh, man, those are good. That's a top tier chip. Yeah, I like these a lot. Yeah. Mm. Six dollars? Um, That's the world we live in? I, I don't think it was six. I think it was Great like crunch on the four ruffles. something. But yeah. So it's it's just, like, it says six on the front of the back. Wow, look at me. I can't afford fun gas, excuse my language, but uh, here I am. A couple gallons of gas or what one about, bag of chips. What about grass or ass? Can you afford that? Nobody wants this ass. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, you know what? I have another chip if uh, you two will... Um, Is it the one on your shoulder? Oh, I was going to actually look. Um, I got nothing. How you doing? Doing good. Make sure you're not blocked. By Doing chips. real well. What we should do is lock the door so you can't get back in. <laughs> These chips yeah. are good, man. They're they're dangerously the, good. The smell. I'm is, glad that you closed the match. Is right? actually there's a spice to it. Um, I don't know how they get so much spice out of a powder. Who's oh, are those ready to get confused? are those the voodoo's? Oh, oh no, takis. No, brand new takis. Did you see the dragon the, sweet chili? Dragon taki. sweet chili. There's another talky thing that's supposed to be not spicy. The ranch one. Yeah. I went to the store to try and get them. They did not have them, no. but they had those, which I, I also saw. Them. I saw them. They were at like, mm -hmm. you know, probably a quick check. I, I, I'm going to need a beverage. Wait, you said they were probably a quick check. Did you see them or you were thinking? I they think were I there? did. It was either quick check or a Wawa. Oh, yeah. You know, we checked Walmart, but I didn't. I should always think to go to like. Wawa, quick check, like gas station related things to, to get Takis because they usually have more variety. I have gum in my mouth. Yeah, that probably wouldn't work. Those are pretty good. Um, I think the hot meter is a little misleading. They're not as hot as it says they are. Do you find that, RMC? They, 
they are not as hot if you only eat one. If you eat like Ooh, five or going, six, it's it builds. Like burn. Yeah. It's also, but it's not like bad. I would say that's spicier right off the bat. That's what knows, I thought. But there is a heat to them. Uh, if you're my dad, you eat half of one. And no joke, you choke for a half hour and complain about it for the rest of the day. That's Takis, though. I mean, if you're over a certain age and you're eating Takis, you're going to you're going to feel it. We already know how confused he is in general, so he doesn't need any more. <laughs> you talking. think it would set him straight, actually. He eats a Taki, and he's like, the square root of a moment of, <laughs> yeah, a moment of clarity, and then it disappears. Uh, well, if you want more, go right here. It's, uh, yeah, it's got that sweet, spicy chili. Yeah. I could eat good. fried chips snacks forever and ever. I just can't, I can't stop. I, I started eating those when I went on the diet. I started eating those veggie straws. Mm. I mean, they're better for you than chips, but it's it's Why? still like fried. Why are they better, though? Well, the eat, bag says they're thirty percent. I mean, you can eat like forty of those for one hundred fifty calories, roughly, versus probably. 15 but I still to think like of these ninety percent. Like they're still potato based. Like they're still potato chip. They're they're just like vegetable stuff mixed in. But they're it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know? The my point no, is I, I can't stop funny. eating the things, and I shouldn't be like. And I'm just like, oh, I'm eating veggies. This is great for me. And I mean, they're I'm, hollow. And that's you know that gets me through. Well, you know, you, if you rolled up a chip, it'd be mm. hollow too. Roll that baby up, man. Those are really good. That's one of the better chips I, I've had in a while. But I, I gave myself a little bowl of those things, and like spicy, spicy, make the ball. It, my tongue, is set ablaze and suck my tongue. <laughs> um, th those are like Remember I think that? I think those lime and jalapeno things are very spicy very spicy for one chip the spice level was more than i thought it would be like so I to the point problem i mean i like spicy things but i don't i don't necessarily i can't necessarily handle them all the time uh i can handle spice no problem but yeah if i ate like 30 of those i'd be sweating you'd be so, not yeah gonna lie, i'm sweating like the tongue starts to go numb and then i have a, a carbonated beverage so that starts to like hurt to mm, drink yeah you don't spice. do carbonated with with spicy no you do it's milk. a bad mix water milk well this yeah. guy room temperature man over here imagine if you had a carbonated right. drink with a spicy chip his mouth would Car explode carbonation with spicy is a, it's a terrible combination that it's it's just it's not pleasurable in any way shape or form. room temperature carbonation is already spicy just on its own a little bit to some mouths i do so all, i've heard i do uh keep all my soda at room temperature it's true uh although i keep the guest soda in the fridge so tasty uh, uh who, oh I my think i i'm pretty much everything that i drink is room temp uh guest soda uh they uh, they just did a test recently to see oh, the difference no. between am i the nut colt no you're not the nut you're Whew. the norm nice you're not gonna like the results of the test but you're the norm <laughs> oh no um they did a test between uh flavor and taste buds and flavor receptors between room temperature and cold drinks and i say cold it was something like if you're going with a cold drink it has like a 34 percent reduction in oh, what you actually yeah. taste with sure. everything and they were like if you want to actually taste the beverage or whatever you should go room temperature but and i've also been made fun of because i can't like i i can't eat like hot hot things temperature wise I mean, my, like, why would something fresh out of the why oven would that open you up things? to be made fun of? You mean fresh out of the oven? Yeah. Huh? Okay. Oh, temperature hot. Yeah, because like if <laughs> even <laughs> that's all. Whoa, Sorry. <laughs> no, because even if I like I reheat something, Are you doing cold I, mouth? I, I don't want really hot. Like you go to a pizzeria, right? Go to a pizzeria, right? I like the last time I went to a pizzeria, and I was like, just I'll just take a slice of this. You burn your mouth. By the way, it was like four dollars for anything. one slice. And I can buy I, a bag of chips for that. I was like, listen, Hi, TKO, good I was like, you. just hold it in front of the oven. Like, don't even throw it in there. And the guy was like looking at me. I'm like, trust hold me in front of the oven. Like, you know, put it in there. Let's count to 10. The buddy. guy, get was... a guy back there to sit on the box and I'll take yeah. that. Just the uh, guy was right to look at you, by the way, if that's indeed no, what you that's said. That's not what him. I said. But like, <laughs> I was just like, like, don't heat it up too much. And he like looked at me and I was like, just don't heat it up too much please like and he was like what like a minute i was like yeah it's enough you know I, you, you also i don't know i, I want to be able to taste it not go like this <laughs> i mean the other thing is is I, I am positive you weren't rude about it when you asked him to do no, it i said listen jerk but for pizza there's people who like cold pizza there's people who prefer cold yeah. pizza it's not too crazy to be like 
Well, he wasn't. Making, he he didn't make fun of me. I've been I've been made fun of in the past just because it was like, oh, your baby mouth can't handle the heat, and it's like, listen, <laughs> I am I am an Italian American boy. I want to inhale my food. <laughs> I don't want to savor it and take time. And if it's too hot, I can't just you know. I fed up with this world. Can't just shovel it in. Well, go I, ahead. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's funny. Pizza places are funny when you get a slice because. If I had a pizza on my counter, just out, like not in the box, just like out all day long, I'd be, I mean, I'd, who am I kidding? I'd still eat it cold, but like, I'd be a little more reluctant, but like at a pizza place, I would never want them to take something from behind the plexiglass and just like serve it to me on a plate. That just seems wrong. Doesn't it? Like it, you feel like, even though it might not, you feel like the oven's killing some sort of germs that it got uh, by sitting there. I'm not crazy about the pizza sitting behind a glass. Yeah. And I can't ever imagine myself being like, don't put it in the oven. I'll take, unless I'm going to take it home with me and heat it up. Yeah. If I'm well, eating it there, put it in the full oven. Full disclosure. I don't, uh, I don't support this activity. I was rushing to get here. Not this wasn't today. Uh, I was rushing, but I'm always rushing to get here. Uh, and I hadn't eaten something that day and I stopped in and I just wanted it warm because I didn't want all the juices dripping off and I, I ate it in the car. Well, eating in the car is the big thing nowadays. Well, Everybody's trying. doing it. That's not, not fine. Not, not safe. What rules, what? you sons of bitches? Don't there listen to no me. Rules. Don't do what daddy don't do. do. Well, we got that. Do I daddy? Do you self-driving on the tesla for the rest of the month so we can eat whatever we want but you need to have your hands on the steering wheel i thought no every once in a while it'd be like are your hands there and you put them on but other than that no are you still here um, no elon i bailed a few minutes ago it's pretty impressive and it's great for eating uh i sent you crashing. a pizza thing in jersey that looks yeah. incredible and uh, i sent I, you the news of burger king's new away. drink which is out today it's a cotton candy drink and a large is only 150 calories. So I was like, mm. Mm. I got the um, the Sonic float thing. Mm. Uh, couldn't tell 30? you what the flavors were. No, no, no. Oh, okay. The uh, the Eclipse float. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't have sprinkles, and it said we don't have glasses. I in the image, it's in a glass. You know, almost like a a Pizza Hut glass, like mm -hmm. you know, like the kind of crackled looking sides textured oh i know it trust me i see it in my dreams so when i see when i drive up and i see they don't have the glasses for the drink i was like whatever i don't need a special glass they meant eclipse glasses because they were giving out free eclipse glasses when you would buy them oh cool and i knew that going into it and i still when i saw it i was like oh they're out of glasses yeah just give me a regular cup i don't care not what they meant I, I, but you couldn't have got the glass anyway because they were out of it. That's what they were said. out of it. They said the sign says we're out of it, but I was just like, and then when I ordered it, the person said we're out of the glasses, and I was like, it's fine. I'll hey, it, it was I'll fine anyway because it was after the eclipse. Yeah. I don't need them. But the glasses, uh, like what he's you going wear through on it your right solar glasses, he's yes. going through it right now. I this thought you were getting a, like I thought you were gonna drink a milkshake and then look through the cup at the. That would be awesome. I thought it was like that's what I thought. Like it's a glass with the thing, and I was like, and then that's what I thought you were gonna be. I doing. mean, that would Don't be. Don't get the sun in your eyes, but get the delicious sonic <laughs> float in your. Eyes. <laughs> yeah, the but uh, it's not working. But yeah, and like and like three quarters of the way home, and I was like glasses. Oh my gosh, the solar eclipse so glasses. So okay, yes. high Ross, high back seat, high alternate list. So uh, you just thought they were like commemorative cups, yeah. cups of the eclipse. Yeah. This, both, this is amazing. This is so great. I love. I was like, I didn't this. even know it came in a special cup. It's so funny. Oh, that, it doesn't. Yeah, why would I it never even think did? That? But man, that's great. And and like mine was way more out him, there it's like that like what a special yeah glass i mean that i love that it. him i love that what idea. he thought is very perfect for mike you <laughs> thinking what you thought blew my mind i would have yeah, never no one would think, that. no one's thinking well that that's crazy. also the you're thing like, like in seven minutes you're like <laughs> yeah i got an ice cream headache and i'm like looking through that oh god is this is it is it an ice cream headache or did yeah, i accidentally right? look at the sun i can't four, tell am i going blind? like blind and you have <laughs> brain freeze That's so, great. <laughs> so because you think that or because you thought that someone out there thought that and went through with it they were like oh, plowing oh, through the drink to empty the cup to look up to the sun that would have been, been really good man that's good 
Uh, yes, I see you guys talking about spicy foods and Conan O'Brien being on uh, hot ones. I haven't watched that yet. I didn't realize that was things. so new. I watched like a super, brand like, new baby. Something came up with it was like a clip where he's like drooling white foam he's from an his Irish mouth. man. He's yeah, he's got to be hurting bad. Yeah, I bet you. It's, and uh, it's I bet well, you it's going to be really. He's funny. like taking swigs of the bottles. Well, he's so. doing um yeah, he's doing the run this week for uh, to promote a show coming up on Max. That that travel show is done and it's airing. Very soon, next couple weeks. Or so. I'm, I'm Colonel Brian. Oh no, never. I love him. I love him to death. I listen to his podcast. I think he's great. I've got not one bad thing to say about him. I wish he didn't do the Tonight Show, but that's just a personal thing. Uh, I was surprised he did it, but I'm no. not surprised. <clears throat> I'm not surprised. He's such a nice guy, and he's and he's he he's made you know he's made his way since then. And, yeah, and I think he's in a really good spot. What but like with that, they kicked him off the I, Tonight Show. I just, first of all, I have got such a problem with with Jimmy Fallon personally. So like that was half of it. But but the other, but the other half was just like that he would even do the Tonight Show. Like I I don't know. I mean, happy for him. It's promotion. He does what he wants yeah. to do. But and he didn't have to do it, which is cool. But like, you know. I mean, me in that industry, I feel like that that would be a natural progression to go from like the he was on like the late late show or something, right? Didn't mm -hmm. he have like a late late show yeah. and then like to to move up into that other time spot where more people? That's are what like, you do. Yeah. yeah, it was the it and was, was there for like what deal. four months or something. It, it wasn't such. It wasn't even just a huge deal to him personally. It was a huge deal to that genre, like to the whole yeah. entire thing. Like anybody who was anybody who liked that format. Mm, watched johnny forever you know and and then jay and then to have it happen the way it did but you know what like so many years it's it's funny because like a lot of years have passed already since then which is crazy and he's in such a good place that the fact that he did the show in such good spirits and everything it wasn't like he was forced and it wasn't anything like yeah. i mean it's it was so wholesome just like he is kind of that i you know i'm only hating on it because i'm a bitter man and that's the only reason. I mean, he's in such a great place that he's so busy that he can't even take any time away to respond to Rami Cowboy up on uh, that. Yeah, that actually thanks. still bums me. That that bums me out too. Maybe more than the Tonight Show thing. Uh, well, <laughs> I could always start emailing that rep again and see what happens. Um, yeah, I do have to watch that hot ones. My sister is telling me how good it is, and she's a big fan of Conan and his podcast as well. So I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out at some point. I'm nervous he's not going to be in the new Death Stranding because we have we've been seeing all these uh, like Sam Lake Death Stranding drinking coffee with Kojima thing memes or whatever. Uh, I mean that you know that game's not going to be out for another couple of years, so there's plenty of time. But or maybe they're just going to use the same scans they used last time. But who who knows? Hi, Giant Reggie. Thanks for being here. Um. So, as usual, there's not too many top stories. We're going to do our topics beforehand and then our Patreon stuff and then into the news. Uh, so, I don't personally have anything to talk about beforehand outside of Patreon. But do you do, whether you know it or not, because I thought yeah. we could turn to you for your thoughts <laughs> on the Fallout TV show, since that is game related. Sure. Is it started already? All episodes out. It's finished for some of us. Um, so, thank you goodness for amazon doing what everyone should do putting all episodes out and letting the consumers watch them at their leisure if they want to watch them one at a time over a week for uh, you know what i'm i'm gonna stop the shtick the show was great uh and it wasn't great it was just it was fun to watch it was uh, it was a lot of fun it was um it didn't take itself too serious. I, I guess I should start with I've never played the games, so I don't know if I'm even qualified to be talking. I guess I'm qualified because you I watched the show. Yeah. But uh, I have no idea how closely it stayed to the game or if people who played the game will be upset with this adaptation. Uh, what I liked about it is that it's not like, not not that you can compare it, but it's not like Last of Us on HBO where it's like, it's just so dire and everything is just the end of the world. Literally, this is an apocalypse show and not everything's the end of the world. It's like kind of funny. Yeah. And there's it's, a dark humor to the, and it's series. not, um, and it's not like bad humor. Like a lot of it, like I was laughing at a lot of it. So like, it's, it's really well done. The characters are really, are really, uh, interesting. I liked, I, li I think I liked almost all the characters in it. Um, there's, you know, it goes in a couple of places that, 
I rolled my eyes or, you know, had had little like asides with myself about. But judging by the nature of the show, it doesn't get in the way of your viewing enjoyment. You know what I mean? Like yeah. any of that, like when you have to take movies and TV with a grain of salt because it's movies and TV, it's not real, you know, like and people have plot armor and all that kind of stuff. But um, it works really well in the show. Uh, the casting is great. Um, it leaves it open for more and I, and I hope they do more because I'd, I'd like to see it, but yeah, I binged it in like two days, really liked it. Thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I recommend it to anybody out there who's just looking for like, uh, like a, a very watchable, um, interesting show. It's, it's, it was, it was good. Do you have any questions? Cause I feel like I'm spinning my wheels over here. No, you're fine. I was just looking for generic thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, I've played. Fallout 3 and New Vegas, and I enjoyed them both, but I'm not, like, looking for the show to be like, it needs to follow the storyline. Like, you know, as long as it has the basic bones, it's fine, and yeah. the trailers make it seem like that. Uh, I'm not attached to any characters or anything, so I don't really care about that. I just would watch the show, and that's it. Oh, here's a question. Uh, how much is Kyle McLaughlin in it? He's not in it very much. He's in it for probably, I think he's, like, in the first episode and the last episode, or, like, a couple episodes. I know. But, um, yeah, no, he's... He he's wonderful. I was saying about Kyle, Kyle McLaughlin. I I love him. I I love what I see of him, like as a real person on the internet. If that's real or not, he just seems fun and funny. Uh, and I've loved him in the movies and TV shows that I've seen, uh, especially when he was younger. I feel like he was like a really good actor. Now I don't know if I'm biased or what. I still love the guy, but he just seems like he's him. He doesn't seem like he's even trying to play any parts anymore. He's just doing his thing. Uh, but, but still, still lovable. Um, the, the, actually the standout is the, for me was the, the lead woman. And I think her name is Ella Purnell uh, or something like that. She's excellent. Uh, she's really, really good. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was it was fun to watch. I, it was eight episodes, and I Ella I, Purnell. Yeah, she was she's excellent. Um, what is this on Amazon? It's on, it's on Amazon. Amazon. Um, so yeah, it was it was good. Now I said this to you the other night, RMC, when I was talking about it, and you were like, "This it's part of the game." I don't I, I don't buy it. You know, I don't think they put this in there because it's part of the game. There's like th at least three, maybe four, like big scene, like action scenes where it's just this super slow-mo with like like 19 like first of all the soundtrack's great it's all 1950s stuff everybody who's played the game probably knows that already i like all that stuff and i love when old classics are are like juxtaposed with like horrible uh like like apocalyptic visuals you know like bioshock is very like you that do, you do like that i do like it, it you know because it's like you're like you're getting like because it it feels so out of place because you're listening to some like 1950s standards but you're looking at like you know some uh nuclear mm -hmm. wasteland and the way they use the music is is wonderful so i really loved all that but there's a few scenes where they where they do kind of like a and it's not like the first time anyone's ever done this, but like the like in the latest Guardians of the Galaxy when they had that super slow mo fight scene, and it was like ugh, like they do that like four or five times in this show, and it's you know it is what it is. Like it's it's cool because it's like oh it's funny. Look at this action scene, and like this it's bloody and it's fun, and they're playing the song that like is juxtaposed against these people getting brutally murdered. But then but at the, but those are the moments when I'm like. I'm not a 13 year old boy anymore. Like I, like I realized that I've like, I might be, I might have grown out of like thinking a scene like that is really cool for the sake of it being like a slow-mo bloody scene. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't know if that, if I, where I was going with that, but you were originally saying you don't buy that they did it because it's in the game. And I was going to push back hard on that. Cause well, it's a huge part of the game. So, slow motion game, like slow motion. Fights the game, like, like you can go on YouTube and look up compilations of so like millions of views of like the, you, the, the you, camera slows down and they show like a bullet slowly flying and maybe the camera will fly around it or like somebody gets shot in their head explodes and it's in slow-mo and like but it's like one moment that gets slowed down not an entire fight 
Yes. Well, it's just pieces of fights. <clears throat> like, you know, when you because you target portions, that seems like a loose interpretation of what's in the game. When you target portions, heavily towards something that's popular, like Guardians of the Galaxy. When you target portions of the body in Fallout, slow this down, slow sure. you it slows down completely. Yeah, and the camera goes back and forth and moves around. Like slow-mo is a part of the battle system in those games, like one hundred percent. Maybe that's where they maybe that's where it started, but it's it's I mean, used quite a bit get, and it's like that would get obnoxious in a live action thing for that to happen frequently. So throw it into one moment that you know it's just one thing that kind of bugged me a bit, but it never took me out of it. And and like I was saying, the tone of the show is it has that a little it's not a light-hearted but like it has a little lightness where they can do things like that and it's not out of place like if <laughs> if if for instance in the last of us tv show if they had like slow-mo yeah. scenes like that you'd be like what am i watching you know but here here it works i was just like ugh, rolling my eyes a bit but that's it's fine that's um, something that i did enjoy in uh guardians of the galaxy volume three that fight scene just because that like that's a moment i mean the whole all all of those movies are very heavily revolving around music but the way they do it in that fight scene and then it, how it basically slows it down so that you see how like intricately everyone on that team works together and it's just like every every move over here is happening because then it, it like ties into something that happens on this side of the room too. And it's just like, you know, it, it's really fun and whatever. So 13 year old boy right here. Thank you. See, I, I, sh I shouldn't have said it. No, I shouldn't have put it insult. like that because <clears throat> it's funny that I'm complaining about this because I also liked its use in the guardians movie, but I just was using that as an example to kind of give you guys an idea of what I was trying to, to talk about, but maybe it's like how it was used and how, how much it was used in it um but again the tone of the show it fits for it so that was just that was mostly a me thing um now that the show is over in classic do fashion i'm pissed off that there's not more i wish they had just wrapped it up and told me what happens because now it's like well i watch i binged all that and now it's like oh well season two is going to reveal what you know it's yeah, like, well, like three years right yeah so like i'm bummed about that but uh that's just a also a me thing there are a few there are a few times that they, they they deliberately did things with Walton Goggins character. I, I love the guy as an actor um, and the character is, is is really cool. But there were some things that his they had his character do that. I was just like, just tell me what happened between the past and the future, because they're like, you know, you see him in the past and you see him in the future. And they, then you're like, how did he get? to how he is now <laughs> you know and then they're just like we're not ever gonna tell you and we're gonna let you think you know and I then i mean they just mean they're not gonna tell you now like they're gonna it'll you know you'll get breadcrumbs until later but like i want to like the guy he's impossible to like right now it, unless you're a 13 year old boy who's like ooh, the, the bad guy's cool you know like so i want to know why he's bad that's just a me thing too we'll get there maybe maybe season two will tell us something who knows hmm. but um yeah it was very very surprised that i liked it it wasn't on my radar at all i had no idea that i was even gonna watch it i never i've i've seen a trailer like back whenever the heck it was released and i was not interested one little bit and um you were also really turned off at the fact that they were like at an award ceremony and they seemed like they didn't know anything about oh video yeah games. i talked a lot of junk about that didn't i <laughs> yes. man i'm such a jerk about you everything <laughs> um that was funny though if we go back i probably i'll probably find it funny um yeah because you said it. yeah because i'm funny right everyone <laughs> uh so anyways uh yeah i was a jerk about that but like but yeah i mean i i watched stuff about walton goggins since watching the show and he was just like he's like i didn't play the games but i just watched old cowboy movies and that's what i based my and it was like it worked um but yeah no i i i don't i i don't know it was um I, I i lost my train of thought with what i was saying before the award show thing sorry uh i forgot what i was saying what was i saying must have been compelling um <laughs> you started to say what you were gonna say we never got to like the son of a gun oh, i'm sorry that's okay i'm sure it wasn't important 
but uh <clears throat> but yeah i don't know i i recommend watching it, it was fun it's not like the greatest show in oh, the world that's but what it, you were gonna it, say you were talking about how you had no plans on watching oh it. yeah thank you i had no plans at all on watching it and then uh rmc because he knows that walton goggins is one of my main men um reached out and <laughs> the way you were talking about it i thought you were gonna watch it day one you seemed so excited I about this he was texting me text... all day about this i i by all day he means twice and in I, one day oh, so yeah in earlier one, in the day and then later in the day that's and why pretty much the, all day <laughs> why the second time because it got surprise released early i just tell him about the show and then oh it's out now if you wanted to see it uh regardless i'm happy you did i started to text and he texted me back and i was like i feel like he's like aggravated that i'm texting about this and i was like i kind of regret that i texted him now and then it came out and i was like well in for a penny and for a pound so i told him it was out early i was i was just confused because you told me about it and then and then uh and then you were like oh like later in the day you're like it's out it's out now you can watch it all episodes now and well, i was like okay and well, you I... know i like all episodes yes. so thank you very much so i was like i was like wow he seems really excited for this uh, and then I was like, I was like, you sound way more excited than I'll ever be. And then, and then he was like, oh, I'm not even going to watch it. And I was like, what is the point of this? Like, then I was aggravated. Do you still not know the point? Are you not watching? The because point is, I don't live life just for myself. I was excited for you. I love sharing. Are you not going to watch so it? They can go because it's, it's really it's, nice. It's too you. similar. To no, no, no. A it's remake not a not going to watch it. It's not a not going to watch it. It was okay. just what did he say? Well, now now that I like it, he's not going to watch it. If I didn't like it, he would watch it tonight. None, none which of, is funny. I none mean, of that tell is him. true. He's not going to like none it. None of that if is he did true. Watch it, okay, he probably I'm out. I'm done. It. I think he will no like more. it, but I'm not going to tell no, him that. If you tell him he won't like it, he'll watch it. I watched Three Body Problem, and I don't like that. I watched well, uh, I told you Shogun, you like and that. I like that. I didn't tell you anything. You watched that before. I so did, what so. I'm saying, we got all your your hypothesis doesn't make any sense. We got with, things all over the place. One show, one show. I could go back. I just gave two right now the three body problem i told you not to watch it and what did you do you watched all of it no uh, why did i watch three body problem because he, he told you not because to. two people that you are friends with told you that it wasn't good and who? they didn't you like and who? it adam no wrong my dad my dad was the first one to talk to me about it remember i don't remember <laughs> I watched it. I just yesterday. I was like, "Dad has three body problems." He's like, "I haven't finished yet." And I said, "I started watching oh, it because that's right. of you." He loved it. He loved yes. it. Yes. Yeah. He, he was saying it was like do. excellent stuff. How yes. did he not finish it then? Because it's not excellent. Because I don't know. Because he's too busy watching. Because uh, he watched uh, <laughs> Alien movies with John Cena in them on YouTube and being excited <laughs> about he, those coming out. He watched three episodes and was like. He said he's up he was, to episode. And he's like, wait a second, wait a second. There's more episodes. I've watched all three. He said he's up to episode seven. I'm just wait a mind minute. There's boggled. seven bodies. Uh, I'm just mind boggled that you can't fathom that I might not have an interest in something, but I am so excited to tell you about it because I think you will. Like, I love doing. That. I guess that I shouldn't be mind boggled. That was very very nice. It, I guess it was just how excited you were for me when I wasn't even excited. And it's a main man. And I think it was like. Because, because after the after the first text message where I like clearly wasn't that interested, or at least I thought I made it clear to you that I wasn't even that interested, you then texted me again later and you were like, it's shadow dropped, it's out now, it's it's all episodes. So I just thought you were so excited. I was like, I was like, he must be the one that is excited because I texted him back and didn't seem that excited, or at least I was I didn't you know. Yeah, so I got the impression you were angry. So I was like, uh oh. And then I was like, I probably shouldn't have texted him about well, it. And and here's the thing. Here I am trying to defend myself about being a jerk to a friend that just wanted to let me know that like a show that maybe I would like is on. But uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's well, what it is how, to be friends with response? me, ladies and gentlemen. Was the response? Oh, cool. Because I get that sometimes when I text him and that's just how I read it. Because that's how he speaks Who's in response? person. Him? Me? Wow. Oh, that sounds real interesting. Am I really that uh, transparent? I mean, that's, what, that's what your texts sound like, but that's again, that's in my head. Okay, good. Those are at least those are just the texts that you're how you're reading. I love that we've all been friends for twenty years and we have no idea how we talk to each other or what each other are getting at. Uh, Can you not find it? I'm looking for it right now. 
I said, I was actually just going to message you about something else. The Fallout show is getting rave reviews over 90% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics. I'm going to look at it right now. Uh, 92%. So How did you save hold voice on. messages? Hold on, hold on. I don't delete text. They delete automatically. Yeah, you, that's a setting. You can turn it off. I forget what? how you do it, but there's uh, a wait a minute. It you comes don't out, I said it comes out. This guy deletes everything all the time. I delete texts when they have a whole bunch of attachments because I don't have storage on my phone. I just did oh, it the other day. I go in the one where you can only uh, you can only so, delete like sixty of them. Blah 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 blah. I said release date April twelfth. Oh, that's today. It's a uh, yes, wait. which plays into what I said. Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because it came out early. It came out that that's day. That's why I messaged him later. He texted me earlier in the day. He oh, told I don't me know this. when this message. Now is this coming. is a Couple voice message ago. that he's reading the transcript. I'd love to hear his voice because all right, he all right, sounded we're do it. excited. Excited for a friend. I'm going to play this to prove that I'm excited for. Listen a friend. to all the things he does. I was actually, just going to message you about something else. The uh, Fallout show is getting. Raved he's like out of breath. Reviews. Well, he was on the treadmill. Uh, over ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes from critics. Um, uh, I'm going to look at it right now. Yeah, 92 percent. Careful with that. It comes music. out. I should, I should, should, I'm sorry. I should, I should have looked this up before I messaged you. Fall out. He was so too excited. excited. Too excited <laughs> to even look it up. April 12th. So soon. See, but why but, I'm not talking to you about this because it's got Wallen Goggins, and I know you love him. See, there and like go. even with the clarification, I was the end. I was taking your tone. As you were excited, and now that I see it's clearly you were excited for, for me. For you. And, and like, you, you were genuinely by, excited. Yeah, it's for you. And you responded by saying, I do love me some Goggins. Guess I should check it out when it comes out. That's me being really nice. And me. then I said all episodes same day because that's your other big thing because you can play all how the long, time. How, how much later? Um, a minute. Oh, okay. Uh, One good. minute. Oh, I thought this was later in the day. Nope. 404, you texted me and you oh, said, Guess all I should episodes check it the out. same day was about the release date for the 12th, and then they just released them early. Yes. Okay, I see. Uh, what did I say about the all episodes? Uh, you just hearted it. So okay, I was like, right. I get it. He's not interested. Uh, be nice. Uh, and oh, and then you said, Last of Us show got good reviews too, you know? And I was like, Oh, trying boy, to be, I yeah, I'm trying to be negative. I was like, I should have never texted him about this. You agreed with that though. Uh, and I, and then I made a joke and I said, Surely Walton Goggins has never been in anything bad because we know he's been in lots of bad stuff. And you gave the great uh, Larry David gift. And response. I was looking for a Walton Goggins version of that, but couldn't find it. So I gave you that one. And then, uh, I then, sound then, a lot less irritated than I was. Actually, I was being very nice. I knew nice. you were very irritated. That's Trust funny me, that you I knew, knew that. 100%. Because when you sent that first text, I was like, he's already mad. And I'm, I'm just being trying really to, nice in those Trying texts, to be nice. I'm and like, you could tell. I'm like, I got a checklist. Walton Goggins is a main man. He The show comes out, and it's all episodes the same day. Like, it, it's two things that are really important to you. It's true. And then it's Wednesday at true. 9 o'clock that night, I said, Fallout just went live on Amazon early all up right now this is where i get real mean right he says boy you're real excited for this huh <laughs> thanks for the updates and i was like what's going on here <laughs> what a mean person right why right I, so mean. I was He's like just trying so to be mad nice. at me why do you even waste your time <laughs> uh and then i i was like I tried to explain how I felt, and then it went on a whole bunch of stuff. But at that point, I was like, "Yep, he's I, I, I don't know." He's but you're mad that I told him Walt Goggins you, is in the new. What show. was the? What was the? I wonder what the turning point was because there was something about your explanation that got me to watch. Because then I watched it that night because I was like, "You know what? I will watch it." And uh, I don't know if it's probably say, I, "Oh, so I, I will I, watch I mean, it." Whatever, we, and then we can not talk a lot about of top it. Stories. We'll keep going. We I said, about it "I don't plan on watching it. I'm just working." And I got the notification, which explained. I literally was at uh, at my computer working, got the tweet, and I was like, "Oh, I should tell him while I'm here." That's what I did. Said I figured I'd pass it along since we talked about it earlier. Uh, and you said, "Wait, after all that?" And I was like, "After all what?" You aren't even going to watch. And I said, I was telling you because of Goggins, I never plan on watching. Not against it, but it wasn't on my list. That's what I said. You said, wasn't <laughs> on my list. Never played the game and thought Goggins makeup looked bad. <laughs> but if you say, I'll like it, then I'll watch it. And I was like, I never said you like it. I'm just telling you, Goggins. Man, I'm being really cruel now. Uh, this, this is, is what yeah, yeah, this I mean, is. I said, I have no clue if you'll like it. Just saw it was reviewed really well. I just know you like watching stuff with your favorite actors. So I thought I'd keep you posted. That was so nice of you. <laughs> 
And I and then you go, I'm surprised you're not trying it since I know you like things that are reviewed really well. That's like, so mean. He's just going to rake a, me over the coals every text. Yeah, that's because you always talk about Rotten Tomatoes and it's and it's not because of that, but that's what I was. Yeah. And oh, then I so said, mean. again, not against trying it at all. Just wasn't on my list. I usually make the jump if one people I actually know recommend it or two people I know are talking about it, good or bad, because I want to be in the conversation. Then you sent a Goggins gif of you being annoyed. And then you said, OK, well, I'll watch it and I'll tell you what I think. And then, then that was it. Wow, <clears throat> man. So there is I no turnaround, case, Your Honor. There isn't. No, there's, there's no not. turnaround point. There's just I better. You know what? I bet you it was. I bet you in my own head. I was like, everybody's like in the show. If <laughs> I better get on the train now. Because if I don't, then I'm gonna have to be this mean to RMC for like months. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like, you know what? Let me drop being mean. I'll watch it. I'll probably like it, and then I can let them know I liked it. Uh, and here we are. I'm sorry that put you through the, all that. Because I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I knew I was being mean, but I knew you now, knew you were being mean. But now that we reread them, I, I feel like i was way meaner than i ever was intending you know what i mean and it's just like how awful is that and you don't think about that when you're being mean you know you don't think about like how it affects the other person i just love that it all stems from me being like my friend liked this i should tell him well yeah of course it's not like you know you didn't do anything <laughs> and you're like i'm gonna be mean yeah it's not like he forgot my birthday or anything not that that would be a reason but like you know if you're gonna be mean to someone yes don't it, be mean because think, they're being nice yeah it'd be like which one of these would you be mean about your friend telling you that an actor you like is in a show that just came out or you they forgot your birthday and you would be like the actor one actually well i i do apologize You're just reaching out to him and he didn't approve that <laughs> That's what I, as soon as i got the first text response i was like oh no i didn't know it's gonna be one of these things and i was like well like i said in and for penny and for pan because i'm glad you did you know because i wouldn't have watched it and i ended up liking it and i'm eating my words and i apologize to you if you would if you would be so kind as I to accept your apology find Listen, your way to accepting hi z Kamudo. i know apology. at any time and with any text that that's the way the conversation can go so in the back of my mind, <laughs> that's not a good thing either. I'm not saying you know a, that about me. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I know you. I'm saying, unless it's a TikTok or like a funny video, I know that the conversation could, on a dime, turn to that point. So I was prepared. Hi, Ice Silver. Um, but I got into it knowing what could can potentially I, happen. Can I open these blinds? Sure, go right in. Uh, so there you go. Now uh, you liked it, you watched it, and now you're mad <laughs> but, that a second season is out. What, but at what cost? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, I'm not watching the new season of Taskmaster yet, uh, William. Uh, I have all the YouTube notifications for it, <laughs> but I'm not watching. Uh, I would like to talk about another show with you, too, but we can't go into spoilers. But you and I both X Men 97 100% agree. Did Greatest you watch the newest episode? episode of a no. TV show I've ever seen, maybe. <laughs> that sounds like hyperbole. And like something I would say, but I 100% agree with them. It's one of the greatest episodes of a show I have ever seen. It has everything. It's done so well. It's so I impactful. Can't, I can't believe they fit it all into the one episode because yeah. it is constantly moving, involves almost every single core character. And it's like a core thing thing for each character it's not just some like like oh they're in the the episode like each thing is yeah. amazing and i was even while i was watching it because because you let slip you'd seen it before i did and you let slip just how much you liked it and uh let me preface this i knew that was a mistake because as soon as i say i like something he's ready to crap on it. and so i was like so, oh i tried to pull it back and i'm watching it and i was like and i was enjoying it but i was like you know nothing's happened like things are happening but it's like a lot of talking by the end, I had to send him a message and tell him just how much I, I was yes. moved by it because it was unreal from from beginning to end and uh, every, every way they handled it all. And it's still done in like a Saturday morning cartoon yeah. style where it's I, I it's they just knocked it out of the park. I cannot uh, Malik Halo, recommend it not. enough. Uh, hi, SD. Uh, yes, we're talking about X Men '97. No, Malik Halo, you can jump in with the new series. You're fine. It picks up from where the old one left off, but it, you're not going to be lost. You'll be totally fine. I actually recommend. I mean, I I hate saying don't watch the original, but like the original is nowhere near as good. I went back and started watching the original when I started watching this new season, and it's like it's almost laughable how how I mean it's still good, but it's just it's different. Like it's not as 
I don't want to say mature because that's the wrong word too. The mature themes and storylines were the there, whole but thing they weren't was that this as captured everything handled. about the originals. Well, that's it. It does. It captures, but it, captures it, yes. it in like the rose tinted glasses way. It captures it, it in captures a sense it that how you remember. Yes. It, you know, like because when you go back and watch it, you're like, oh, I when this you is were the show? Like, when you were a kid and you watched it, it was that big of a deal. And it was more serious than anything else you were watching. It did delve into heavy topics. But, you know, it was still a morning, a Saturday morning cartoon for kids where animation was handled differently. This show takes all those core things that the show was being, but does them in the way that like is for adults. Basically, it's so well done. I this episode is one of the most impressive episodes of a TV show I've ever seen. It's phenomenal. And that that whole dance scene. Oh, my God. It was that amazing. whole dance scene is amazing. The way the story that's told, the way they use the music, the fact that they use that song the music was awesome when, <laughs> was so so I'm watching, i don't want to spoil i'm watching on the treadmill and i start you know rogue comes down yeah and i was like i think i recognize that beat and then like you know the melody comes in i was like is this what i think it is once and i, I heard like, the lyrics i was like is this and then i was like oh my god like, this song's so perfect and i immediately i thought of three body problem because they had there's a difference between using a song that makes sense and using it in a way to elevate an experience or using a song that be like, hey, this song is about what's going on. In right. Three Body Problem, they have a Radiohead song playing in, in on the radio in the car in one scene. And it's like... Well, that's not realistic. It's so... It's so... On the nose. like Aggressively used. Yeah, it's way too on the nose. And it doesn't fit the scene at all. It's just like, this is... This song is about what's happening, but the song doesn't fit at all. In X-Men 97, they have a song where the lyrics fit exactly what's going on. But it's used in a scene where people are dancing. And like it's n the song just doesn't play as the normal song does. Like they do a little bit of the drum beat or a little bit of the melody without singing. And it starts before the main part of the scene happens and it continues afterwards. And then like another character comes in and he's like, stop the music, stop it. Like. The way that they used it throughout that whole scene, one of the best I've ever it awesome. seen. It was so good. It's it's right up there for me with um, uh, the Stranger Things. Uh, you know that. Oh yeah, uh, running up that hill. That mm -hmm. that in the graveyard and all that. The way that song was used there and at the end of that season were phenomenally done. This is right there with it, if not better. It was so good, and that level of quality is throughout the whole episode. It was. A beautiful episode. It, Everybody it that great. wrote that thing needs to get some major props because it was Seriously, phenomenal. To, to think about how they Hi, my fit product. it all into the Hi, traditional Spaniel. like thirty minute Saturday morning cartoon style. Well, that's a that's a like those are gifted writers too. Like I think I think back yeah. to like The Simpsons. The Simpsons would have like. The shit. The episode would start off with a storyline, then switch to a sec, like a <clears throat> a B story, right. and then the main episode, like the majority of the episode, takes place on the C story, and then like they bring it back to like the initial ones, like to they they cram so much content into some of those. Yeah, things. and I with this, you had no idea what was going to happen either. I mean, you couldn't have called no. what was going to happen. Is no this a, is this like a? It. It's crazy. This is a continuation of the last episode. Right or I mean, or was it, that just the title? It's the, all a continuation. It's, it's all tied to the previous episodes. Yeah. No, no, no. But I don't know if it was episode three or four. It said like s the title was like something part one. This is not part two of that. Oh, part okay. one. That part one was Storm's uh, uh, story that Storm is going through. This the uh, Storm's not involved in this episode. It was Jubilee, but yes. Jub no, no. You're getting the first part of that episode is titled something differently. The second part is part one for Storm Story. I, I literally just I watched it again yesterday with my mom. And either. right before the Jubilee section ends, the Storm section begins and it says whatever part one. See, this is where oh, my brain okay. doesn't work. I don't even remember Storm in that episode. So I'm going to. She's the whole that. second half. The Jubilee that, is inside the video game, whatever, blah, blah. blah. Then the second half is Storm in the felt, log cabin with the guy. And he's oh, my like, gosh. It felt right. like two episodes to me. Yeah. And and to be honest, it was better for it because I wasn't digging the Jubilee section. Go. And when it like totally cut, I was like, oh, this SC is way better. Says the episode is called Motendo slash Life Death Part One. How did I even put like I. 
I don't know where I go. Like I and I'm not even on my phone during that. Like you say, you fall asleep all the time. Maybe you're fading in and out of sleep, which is sad. It's well, like I think. Minutes. I mean, are you sitting on that couch that's like three miles from your TV? That's the. That's the. I. It, it's I mean, never been an thing. issue before. That's a me thing. Are you watching TV after a big meal, or are you eating while you're watching TV? I don't know. Maybe yeah, having a snack. Maybe that's it. No snacks. Save. You got to save your snacks for after. I mean, that would help me in, in a bunch of different ways. <laughs> um, did you see, did you notice the, uh, uh, in Genosha, a couple of like the newer X-Men? I, I only knew about them because I'd read that comic you had recommended. My about favorite new one class. is there. Yeah, that weirdo with the, the skeleton. exoskeleton. Yes! <laughs> when they were flying over, I was like, there he is! Yeah, I was like, hey, I know that guy. And he was in like every scene, whenever they were I showing him a bunch. Around, he was there. Yeah, I was so happy to see that guy. Of course, I can't remember his name. But I was like, oh, the guy that takes care of, likes to take care of chickens, and he's just a really nice guy. Yeah, I was so happy to see him there. Uh, yeah, unbelievable episode. And uh, there's a line at the end of that episode that is word for word a line from WandaVision. And because I'm a WandaVision freak, I was like, oh my god, this is so perfect. I don't, I won't say it because it's spoiler related, obviously, but just everything that episode weaves together it's man what what a killer episode and the writer was like or the head guy who's not with him anymore he was like episode five is like i'm paraphrasing he said like episode five is where things like start kicking off but he's like but episodes eight through ten are where he's like you know we really hit our what stride. episode so it's like did we just watch are we talking about five five is the one we just watched. now are they it, it, do we know how many episodes are going to be in the season i don't know i don't know uh we can take a look right now 11 or 12 or something man well i i i I teared up i got a little emotion i got a little choked up yeah um at the very end of this episode holy cow yeah uh, i agree 11 according to imdb Uh, wiki says 10 so so, i don't know 10 or 11 whatever doesn't matter oh hold on 10 there you go and then it shows season two with one episode (laughs) Thank you, IMDb, for not giving any real information. So, yes, phenomenal episode. Uh, we talked about gaming-related TV and comic book-related TV. But uh, like I said, there's not a lot going on, so we're, we're fine. Let me tell you about Patreon. What are we talking about on Patreon this week? For a dollar? Uh, I talked about um, giving a game and yourself time to grow along with the game because I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. You know I have my gripes, what? but I've come into my oh, own with the uh, with the battle system and I really, really enjoy work. that. <laughs> and, trying to get him to just say final. And, final! Um, uh, you know, I I really still don't like the story. I'll talk about it more later, but uh, the, the game, as far as gameplay goes, has been growing on me, so there is that. Um, the game... That's right. I just like the game. The uh, I talked about um, WrestleMania because we had WrestleMania Saturday and Sunday last week. Finally, there, perfect. <laughs> there we go. And it was uh, the WrestleMania Sunday. Uh, the main event probably was one of the finest moments in wrestling I've ever seen. I won't go into spoilers because we're only a week out. But what an incredible moment in wrestling history! Uh, I talked a little bit about it when my parents were here yesterday, and I I put on part of the match. And uh, made my mom tear up, who Aww. doesn't really know anything about wrestling. So, boy, was it. It's, man, unbelievable. Yes, Nikki, a joke to make fun of what I like? <laughs> you can see it on uh, your face. Uh, that, that Go ahead. Joke, Let's man. do it. No, I just didn't know if somebody, like, got really hurt. And that's why she cried. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't so bad. I'm way meaner to you in those text messages. <laughs> I wasn't saying it's bad. I could just see on his face. Oh, he's talking about something he likes. Let's I just don't know what, I mean, you can't talk about it. Now this, so now I'm gonna just have I mean, to sit and wait. Real. Dorito frosted Doritos Pop Tarts. That's can that can't be real. <laughs> yeah, how's that going? The whole boycott. Catalog boycott. I mean, how's it going here? Great. How's it going for everybody else? Probably no, everybody forgot. Uh, talk about closing out the Switch with games that it started with, because there are games when the Switch first came out, or it's roughly its first two years that uh, I wanted to play or played and got sidetracked and didn't get to complete. Um, And I want to go back to those games because we're getting near the end of Switch's life cycle. We don't know the exact date for the success or anything like that, but we're coming to a close for it. And uh, things like Blaster Master Zero 2, I never got around to playing it. I played the first one and I loved it. 
Uh, I wanted to play the second one, but just, uh, you know, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I wonder things were very busy switch wise then. And I got caught up in other stuff. Something like that. You think you'd be, even if you did put it off, you think you'd come back to it quickly, right? Cause you're a big blaster master. I'm fan. a huge blaster master fan, but yeah, just, you know, I don't remember at the time what happened, but a deluge of things happened and I never got to it. So that's the one I, it's on my switch now. Uh, so I'm playing it or I will be playing it soon. Uh, I talked about, I talked about this a little before on Patreon, but now I got more into detail about it and I don't know that there is a phrase to describe it, but we, uh, some ideas were workshopped with the Patreon people wearing clothing that represents the things you like, but your clothing doesn't actually have like logo imagery or the logo or anything. So like a big fan of, of subtle. Yeah, we were trying to, I was trying to think of something. Somebody in the comments came up with the perfect one. I think they called it coded clothing, which is a great way to describe it. So clothing that is for fans of that franchise, be a game or a movie or a TV series or whatever, that other fans will recognize if they see it, but the average person won't think anything of it. So uh, that could be a great example. Do's Grease shirt that, you know, nobody that hasn't played Grease will know anything other than it's just some girl on a shirt. I've played it twice and I wouldn't have known what it was unless <laughs> until he told me. Um, so like I have my, uh, I have my aqua converse that I wear or my teal converse that I wear. Cause that's what spider Gwen wears. And I have my, uh, demon slayer hoodie, which it doesn't say anything demon slayer, but it's the same checkered pattern that tanjiro has on his uh, i forget what the japanese thing is called it's not a kimono something like that um and i have my parappa hat doesn't say anything about parappa on it but it is the exact hat that parappa wears so i talked about that kind of stuff because i really like that because sometimes it leads to conversations where people are just like oh i like that what is that and then other people are like oh that's from this and you have a connection there like um when I went to Texas Roadhouse, the lady who was waiting on us was like, tried to th tear your throat out. I really liked your, I really like your hat. And I was wearing a Parappa hat and I was like, oh, it's from a game. Thanks. And she's like, I just like the cute little frog. And I was like, yeah, I like him too. And it was just, you know, a little interaction, but stuff like that. So I've really been getting, getting into that. And I really like that kind of stuff more than. Because like I'll, I'll there's plenty of things I like, but more often than not, I don't like the official merch that comes out because I just don't like the designs that they go with. Or I, I don't know. It just doesn't resonate with me. So this is a cool way to uh, show my appreciation for that stuff and, you know, for it to be a part of my life. And then the last thing I talked about was uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, because I am all caught up. I watched both seasons and the movie. That bathing suit, board shorts. Did you try those? Do they? I guess they don't fit you. You still have them. Did I try them? I don't think I tried them yet. Okay. Uh, no, I tried because old that's... like kitten board shorts that I had that didn't fit. And now they do fit. So I'm sure those will fit. I mean, they'll, but they'll probably be too big is all. Probably. But but yes, I don't think I tried them on. Uh, so yeah, I finished Jujutsu Kaisen. I, I've been chronicling my journey with Jujutsu Kaisen on patreon i talked about starting it because i know it's so popular i talked about my early impressions with it now that i'm finished up with everything talked about my thoughts on it in general um went from really enjoying it uh but having some issues to enjoying it even more and ending up liking the things that were irking me before and then by the end of it i'm like completely all in absolutely love it so it was a it's a great show but now i'm at the point of do i buy the manga or do i wait for the next season of the show i don't know i don't know so that's what's going on on patreon now let's talk about news let's go to news Finally. a very light week but i'll give you what we got uh uk software and hardware for march do you guys feel like guessing or do you want me to just tell you uh you could tell us right Harry Potter. Yeah, okay. Let's can... guess. Uh, so this is March 2024. This is we're gonna do software. This includes digital and physical across all platforms, but Nintendo's numbers for digital are not included. Uh, so there you go. You said Harry Potter. Yes, Hogwarts Legacy is number nine. That is correct. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Do Minecraft. Minecraft, no Minecraft. Uh, Nikki Hill wins. It's over. There you go. Uh, number 10, Command and Conquer. Number nine, Hogwarts Legacy. Number eight, Grand Theft Auto. Number seven, 
Command and Conquer Generals. Number six, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Number five, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Number four, WWE 2K24. Number three, Dragon's Dogma 2. Number two, EA Sports FC 24. And number one, Hell Divers. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, PS5 was number one. Switch was number two. Xbox was number three. There are your numbers. Entropy <laughs> says, nice to see Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, what was it? Re oh, Rebirth. Uh, nice to see Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on there, but I wonder how the sales are. Physical sales in Japan were atrocious. It is very much not a remake for the audience in Japan. That is very true. Uh, Japan likes traditional RPGs, not the direction that Final Fantasy is going in. The franchise doesn't sell like horrendously over there, but it's not selling like it used to because they they alienated their Japanese audience. So at the cost of bringing in Americans and Europeans, uh, they've lost the Japanese for a decent amount. But can they woo them back? I don't know. How do you thread the needle of <laughs> traditional Japanese RPG fans and American action fans? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Uh, I can't think of one example. I'm sure there's something. I'm sure you. Sorry, well, you question? guys are smarter, but uh, uh, talking North about North American how, and Japanese fans. Well, uh, not not even like Western versus Eastern RPGs, because Japan likes very traditional. Americans don't. Final Fantasy has gone way far outside of what Final Fantasy used to be. Dragon Quest. And well, D Dragon Quest is as far away from what Europe and North America want. Is it? Oh yeah, no, I thought it was Dragon Quest. Here. <clears throat> no, Dragon Quest has never had that breakthrough moment here. Legend or in of Zelda: Europe. Tears of the Kingdom. That is that is a great example. That has managed to build it in Japan and more popular than ever everywhere else. So yes, but that's not a traditional. You know, that's not an RPG. I'd want it to be HD 2D, but that's the opposite of what Americans would want. You're saying uh, HD 2D is certainly better, but. Yeah, the it's, people it's they're gonna be like it's not 3D. Part. Oh well, yeah, well, that and the too. Graphics, yeah, 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 yeah. The graphics will do better than like an old school RPG, but yes, not a not as you know. I was good. I, I've been playing as you know Rebirth. The graphics are fine. It's not like they're the best graphics you've ever seen. I mean, it looks nice, but like if you're a graphics whore, there's like The Last of Us looks better in my opinion. Like there's a ton of games that look way better. But, um, but whatever. I mean, it's not all about that. I saw a TikTok where this guy was like, have you ever seen two games, Final Fantasy Rebirth or Final Fantasy Remake and Final Fantasy Rebirth, where literally everything that happens is perfect? And I was like, I feel very differently from this man. And, uh, you know, I went in the comments to see what people were saying. Of course, it's the only TikTok I've ever found where everybody's like, yes, yeah, we all agree. The yeah. consensus is 100 percent. I didn't leave a comment because I don't need to. But. Um, I was like, what am I missing? Na, 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 na. Perfect. Everything is perfect. And he was like, everything has intention. Everything is used in the perfect way. And I was like, I don't get it, man. Yeah, I feel like I'm on Mars when I read that kind yep. of stuff. Uh, did you pre-order Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Endless Ocean Luminous, or Luigi's Mansion 2 for the Switch? Okay. Should I? Did you pre-order them on Amazon? If you did check your email because your pre-orders might have been canceled. Oh, no. For some reason, Amazon has canceled pre-orders for all three of those games. They are saying it's because of uh, what was their exact word? Inventory issues. Now, we've had multiple people reach out to tell us they ordered, they pre-ordered their copy literally as soon as the links went live because that's yeah. how directs work and people can go get them right after. Um, and they're saying my orders were canceled or some of my orders were canceled. So, Nintendo and Amazon have had a very uh, tumultuous. tumultuous tumultuous, relationship. Thank you, Nikhil. Perfect word. Over the years, and some games just were never available to pre-order there. I don't know what it means. <laughs> and uh, for a while, it seemed like things were okay, but now this popped up. So people are like, are these two back to fighting again? What's going on? I reached out to my rep for comment. No comment from Nintendo yet, but I'm trying. So, what about, Have you reached out to uh, Jeffrey Bezos? Uh no I haven't I should I'll try that next more time. important 
Where'd you find this photograph? What game is that from? It's from uh, the uh, original announcement trailer of the original Luigi's Mansion. What? Yep. He looks insane. Uh, yep, Did he like... look like that the whole trailer? Or is that just uh, an no, expression? No, it's just the beginning of the trailer. That's like literally how they announced Luigi's Mansion, uh, like when the game was still in beta. So, yeah. Uh, That's insane. You know, I love Luigi's Mansion, but isn't that insane that they launched that system with that game? It is. It's like insane, right? Which system? What are we talking about? GameCube. GameCube. It is. Very much Nintendo and very much insane. Yes, it's only a move <laughs> Nintendo would do to be like, here's our brand new system, a spin off game with Luigi where he walks around with a vacuum. Enjoy, everybody. Oh, and yeah. here's the trailer. He doesn't look anything like anybody for the first five <laughs> seconds. Um, it was a very bold move, yes. And it probably cemented the uh, GameCube's legacy right out the gate. Does so. he get stung by like? a bunch of bees or something like again again that's beta footage uh they, it was just a promo video it wasn't like the you know the final know, game they, or anything they, but. Beta. but they did luigi dirty with that i can't well, deny yeah. that well I, I i sure i mean it doesn't look as best there i'll agree with that uh d says hi says yep that happened to me for all my pre-orders switched over to target for all except endless ocean as they only have the downloadable version for some reason, Target is showing sold out for the downloadable versions of the Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2. Nothing like a sellout of a digital game. Wait, so yes, if I want, if I want, the, do I have to pre-order these? If I want these physicals, this, this well, this is right now, rough, right? Amazon is the issue. Uh, I'm sure you have GameStop, you have Best Buy, you have Target, you have Walmart. You have there. I can't imagine it's sold out at all of those. Is it going to be a lesser print run? Yes, definitely. But you should be able to pre-order all of them. Fine, you might have to piecemeal it between different retailers, but you should what be okay. What games are we talking about? Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Endless Ocean Luminous, and Luigi's Mansion 2. Two remakes, one brand new. We know which one I'll be getting. And that's funny, though. The, the two that I'm considering are the two remakes that I've played already. Pre-orders are sold way out for Paper go. Mario. On where? Target. Oh, okay. And they were given a little, uh, I think they're giving away like a some kind of fancy or fun pre-order bonus, not fancy. North America, while you're looking up that, I'll do uh, North America. I Americans. already forgot the other ones. Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion 2, Endless Ocean, Luminous. Uh, North America, the games, I'll tell you. I don't know where that music is for me. The, the Tetris Oh, is it music. time for your music? Yes, please. Uh, I mean, there you go. Perfect. Here's what North America got. Arcade Archives, Xvania. Atoll. Bakery Simulator, Botany Manor, Cirrus Business, yes, Cirrus, uh, Cleaning Queens 2, Sparkling, Star, Sparkling Palace, Color Road, Construction Simulator 2 and 3 Bundle, Crypt Trio, Cube Airport and Cube Farmer, Die Again, Dragon Slayer 4, Drossel Family, that is the MSX2 version, Empires Shall Fall, Escape Game, The Deserted House, Escape Room, Super Bundle, Exploration Adventures, Family Game Mega Pack 14 in 1, Farmyard Haven, Football Cup 2024, Greed 2, Forbidden Experiments, Grounded, that's the Microsoft game, or you know, published Microsoft game, uh, Hatsumira from the Future Undying, uh. Helium's Run, Helium Run, sorry. Heroes Hour. King Krieg Survivors. Kitty Patrol Paw Showtime. Leafy Trails Collection. Let's Revolution. Loretta. Mad Experiments 2 Escape Room. Mimi the Cat. Mimi Scratcher. Monster Legacy New Horizons 2. Moon Glow Bay. Motorcycle Extreme Driver. Motor Racing Simulator. N Blocks. Unblock Your Creativity. Uh, Niebensen Plus, Notebook Artillery, Noodle Tag, but that's N-U-D-E-L, so I don't know what that means. Outer Terror, Over Delivery, Delivery Simulator, Oxytone, Planet of Lana, which is a cinematic platformer, Puzzmix, which is a, uh, clone of Suica Game, oh. Retro Mystery Club Volume 2, The Beppu Case, Rose and Camellia Collection. That's the slapping game. Simulation Gold Bundle. Flight Fishing Construction. Slave Zero X. Soko Frog. Sophia the Traveler. Steel Sand Mars Collection. Survival Simulator. The Kinderman Remedy. No, the Kindman Remedy. And Zookeeper. Zookeeper, Zookeeper. 
That's your games <laughs> for this week. Uh, and there's no comment on mine, but there's a comment on Nikki Hills. Josh, can um, you take us there? Well, just so it's, it looks like the Endless Ocean Luminous is available for pre-order, but that's a digital game anyway. No, it's physical. Is it? Well, I didn't see that on Target, but um, GameStop. That's what they said. Target was only offering digital for some reason. Uh, and GameStop has uh, Paper Mario. Yes, and Luigi's Mansion. So uh, for pre-order, there you but go. Who knows? You know, you could get who both the GameStop too. Who knows? Cool. Thank you. I listened. Thank you. What are the next European masterpieces? Let's find out with Nicky's sweet, sweet, sweet releases. He's nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous too. What are the next European masterpieces? <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Let's What's going on? Out with um, sweet, sweet, sweet releases. It's coming. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Thank you, too. Um, Sorry it took so long. Just wanted to get these these games out to, to everyone. They're on the East Shop. The East Switch. Shop. Switch. Nintendo East Shop. Uh, in in the uh, in Europe. <laughs> this week of April 11th, the year of our Lord, 2024. Uh, Atto. Or Atu. Atto. I'm going to say Atto. Bakery Simulator, Botany Manor, Cirrus Business, uh, Cleaning Queens 2, Sparkling, Ooh, Palace, Misspelled, Mr. Romy Cowboy, but you just copy and paste. Not even close. Yes. Oh, no. It just says, uh, Pals, or Palk. Palk. Uh, Die Again, Dreamland Solitaire. Dark Prophecy, uh, Egg Console, Dragon Slayer, Four, Dress, Drassel Family, MSX Two, Escape Game, The Deserted House, Find Room Ninety Six. Uh, I wonder how, how involved that game is. Oh, found it. Done. Just, just had to go down the hall. Ninety five more to go. Uh, Fire Race, Football Cup. Year of Our Lord 2024. Uh, hair dye. Hair uh, dye. Mm. Hatsumira from the Future Undying. Heisting. Helium Run. Hentai Girls Athlete Crush. Now we're talking. Hentai Girls Puzzle. Uh, Heroes Hour. Whole IO and Paper IO 2. Uh, Ilang. Joral's brother and the most important game of the galaxy. Is that like where they uh, hunt humans? I know nothing of it. The most important game or the most, the most deadliest game? The deadliest. The most deadliest game. The most deadliest of <laughs> yeah, the games. The deadly, deadliest game. Most deadliest game. Most important game. Most uh, Yes. <laughs> Joral's brother and the most important game of the galaxy. Oh, Joral's brother. Yeah. Uh, Kitchen Crisis. Kitty Patrol. Paw Showtime. Kudzu. Is that the the sweet game? No, no. Kudzu, Kudzu is a is Game the, Boy game. You got it. Exactly right. But it's available on the Switch too? You got it. Exactly right. Okay. Uh, last Bloody Snack. Leafy Trails Collection. Let's Revolution. Uh, Life of Slime. Loretta. Mimi the Cat. Mimi Scratcher. Monster Legacy, New Horizons 2, Moon Glow Bay, Motorcycle Extreme Driver, Moto Racing Simulator. No umbrellas allowed. Uh, outer what Territory. Rules, you sons of bitches. Oxytone. Puzzmix. <laughs> uh, Slave Zero X. Soko Frog. Sophia the Traveler. Steel Sand Mars Chronicle. Steel Sand Mars Chronicles Survival Simulator. Stunt Scooter Simulator. That sounds fun. Uh, Super Destronaut Landed X Loaded. Do we say the X? Do I've I been told to no, so Landed Loaded? But this is Europe. I don't know what they do over there. What do they call X? Probably something weird. But it could be N. Landed and Loaded. 
Landed cross hatch loaded. They might, they might, it might be by or something. Super Destronaut landed by loaded. <laughs> landed by loaded. I have a crisp. Um, the Kinderman remedy. And, and hey, Europe, which country is larger? Uh, is there a comment, Nikki Hill? There is. There's one from Steister. And Steister says, Chavad Komer der Ud, Nikki. There you go. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Uh, we got our European hardware mm -hmm. sales and software sales. Didn't we do that? For March 20th, we did UK. Uh, but I'm just going to read you these very quickly because uh, a very special circumstance made this list. Um, 10, 9, 8, and 7 are all Command and Conquer Six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, they're all on the top 10 because there was a major sale on them. So people bought those six is grand theft auto five is rainbow six siege. Four is another command and conquer game. Three is dragon's dogma. Two is hell divers. And one is EA sports FC 24 PS five was number one. And then they didn't bother to tell us anything else this year. So, you know, or this right. time, so. okay, hear me out. I will tell you Here's why out. <laughs> grand theft auto continues to sell and be in the top sellers. Boobs, blood, uh, every drugs. month. There are Drugs. teenagers whiskey. whiskey turning of age to buy mature games every month. What game are you going to go for? Yeah, that that's they the are one. going for the game that they have been told they cannot play until they get older. Every month, there are tons and tons. I Preach. can't hunt thousands and thousands of teenagers who have their birthdays and they yeah. and they buy that game. I thought about it's got to be too. it. It's got to be it. You got to show them the hentai way cuz they're missing out on things way more graphic. They're not old enough. The, the hentai way. <laughs> show them the hentai way. He's is the that, correspondent. <laughs> is that the sequel to Ghost Dog? Uh -huh. Way of Ghost the Fist Dog or whatever. Hentai the way. way the samurai. <laughs> um North America, or I'm sorry, uh, Switch Online owners across the world got their Super Nintendo game update. So if you have a Switch Online membership, you got three new Super Nintendo games waiting for you. Or if you're in Japan, you got four. Uh, you can fire up your Switch Online Super Nintendo collection right now and enjoy Wrecking Crew 98, the um, amazing Hebereke, which we know as Euphoria, or Super R-Type, three oh more Super God. Nintendo games available for you. In Japan, uh, they also got Battletoad and Battle Maniacs. Uh, they got uh, Marvelous Mohitos no Mohitosu no Takarajima, and then the other games that we got as well. Well, I'm Squidward. <laughs> Slicer says, "What a big day for Go Nintendo podcast members!" Now both Kirby and R Type are on the Nintendo Switch Online. That's true. That's true. The br and the brothers at that. The brothers. And then finally, our last top story happened today, just like an hour or so ago. Uh, Discord has swooped in to shut down two more Switch emulator related uh, channels. There are two Switch emulators that when uh, Yuzu, was that what it was called? The Yuzu emulator? When Nintendo uh, squashed that emulator with legal threats and took over the domain and, you know, uh, legally settled that. Others were like, we're going to come in and we're going to start our own Switch emulators. Two of those were Suyu and Sudachi. While it's Discord has happen. now... <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Discord has swooped in to shut down the servers for these emulators and also have blocked and disabled the accounts for the developers of these emulators. Uh, Discord was reached out to for comment by The Verge and the comment was, quote, Discord responds to and complies with all legal and valid DMCA requests. In this instance, there was also a court-ordered injunction for a takedown of these materials, and we took action in a manner consistent with the court order. So in other words, Nintendo was like, spoken. hey, they're doing it again, and Discord's like, okay, we're, we're on it, because Discord could be potentially responsible for part of this. So two more emulators, at least as far as their channels of discussion go, have been closed down. Doesn't mean the emulators are going to stop development. That would need a cease and desist from Nintendo themselves. Will that happen? So this is exactly how the last one played out. So, so Discord, it could happen. Discord is monitoring our stuff. Uh, well, you said Nintendo tipped them off to it happening. Nintendo. Good we don't know if officially Nintendo found out, but Nintendo found out that these emulators were in existence and being developed and found the official channels on Discord where they were being discussed with the developers working on this. And they're like, hey, 
these guys are doing things in here they shouldn't be doing. Here's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And Discord was like, okay, 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 we got it. So can't let you do that. Uh, Vinloria says, (laughs) and yet they're still not going after Ryu Jinx. Either they don't know about it, or these guys are only marked as valid targets due to being Yuzu derivatives. It could be either. If you are a Nintendo person who feels that emulators should not exist, you could always forward Nintendo that information. They have a website where you can do that. If you think emulators have a right to exist, then don't talk about it anywhere online because you're going to let Nintendo know that they exist. Oh, uh, <laughs> I thought you said Mandarazzi. I was like, who's Mandarazzi? My Sharuba. And that is your top stories for the day. My mommy just texted me. Let me make sure everything's okay. Uh, oh my god, this is such a nightmare with my parents. For the last like three days, they can't get their TV to work, and it's horrendous. Is it plugged in? Oh, it ends. It ends well. Uh, are I there? Could, are there? Is there remote? Does the remote have good battery? I could go through the whole story everything you're saying is valid because there were those hiccups along the way listen batteries were putting backwards controller didn't have batteries my dad sat on the controller and hit the source button to change the channel and they're like the tv's broken doesn't work he's Um, heading towards certain death for anybody who ever has to deal with a a like tech support of any sort and the first thing that they ask you is is the power on is it plugged in don't get upset and don't be like, I'm not an idiot. I... They need to ask that because they have to start from the beginning. So just give them. Well, a, it's kind of like know. if you ever see a sign that seems stupid to telling you something, it's like that's there for a reason. Somebody yeah. did what that sign right. is telling it's you not, not to do. Like It's, it's not saying those... that you need it, yeah. but somebody does need it. I mean, how many times have you have, have those tech? people talk to somebody and like the problem literally was it wasn't plugged in you know and they they probably spent an hour on the phone trying to figure out everything else always start from the beginning and just because you did it doesn't mean you need to get nasty to the person for asking because that is their job to just cover all the base my mom was talking about how how the internet on her xbox was crappy and i was like well you're right there next to the router you should just plug in with an ethernet cord and she did and she's like it doesn't work now i have no internet and i was like you plug one she end into the router and one end into your Xbox. She goes, that's what I did. And I was like, okay, well, I can't but help she unplugged you anymore. It from the wall, didn't she? And I was like, I'll have to, next time I'm there, I'll take a look. So I went a couple days later. She plugged one end into the router and one end into the TV. I was like, this is not the Xbox. Oh, so you then, got half of it right. So then she just dealt with not having internet for two days because of that? Uh, no, she switched it back to the wireless, but left the cable in there. So oh, you can force it to go one or the other, but. Uh, yes, now she's plugged in correctly and has all the super speed. But, but this I've is actually good text because my mom said they figured everything out and it's working. I gave them a whole bunch of things to do. They did them. I'm amazed that they did them on their own, but it worked. So well, if you ever... Now my dad can get back to the internet watching fake movie trailers. <laughs> uh, sorry, you were going to say if I ever... Uh, it was going to be... I was like, well, if you ever need tips on how to be mean to someone over text, I can, <laughs> I can let you know. Then she won't be texting you anymore. But uh, you would answer meanly, so people would be like, oh, he's not going to help me. I guess. <laughs> Wait, he's playing 4D chess. Uh, Nikki Hill, what have you been playing? Solitaire. Excellent. How's it going? Any big wins? Just the same amount of wins. Uh, yeah, I need to stop playing Solitaire. You look into that Balatro yet? Or Balatro? I don't know what that is. I think you probably we talked told me about, about it. it. Yeah, because yeah. it's, uh, it's a card-related game. We were like, that's the game you should pivot to. Yeah. It's and I need to get away from I need seller. to get away from distractions like that because I play it because it's an easy thing that I know I can accomplish. Uh, and so I use it to procrastinate with other things that I could be using that time for. Well, you are in excellent company. That's a very uh, so. shared feeling by many people nowadays. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. the difference is, you know, now and you want to break out. So now you got to break out. Well, you don't have to if you don't yeah, want but, to, but you, you said know, you want to. But before I stop doing that, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to play a couple more games. That's right. Just a couple more. And, it's, and that's perfect because it sounds like something a gambler would say, and you're playing solitaire. So it's not like you're going to lose any money, though. Can you play solitaire at uh, like slot machines or anything? Probably. It's got to no be way. video solitaire, right? But what do you do? You win like anything? I don't know. Uh, dude, what have you been playing? Uku, uh, Sparkle 2 is my... Oh, still going. It's my wasting time game. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, 
I just want to say this because you said wasting time. Yeah. Did you see the new content that was announced for Vampire Survivors? Oh, no. Yeah. A Didn't... whole Contra crossover. <clears throat> like characters oh. and music and new stages. No and it looks great. It looks really, and really cool. Um, is it like the others where it's a free a free update kind of thing? Or I don't know off the top of my head. Let me check my email. That's cool. But yes, it looked awesome. Uh, it was during like a, there was an indie uh, presentation this week. And the trailer started up. Fall, right? And I don't know when it's coming out. The trailer started up and I was like, wait a minute. This sounds like a new take on a Contra song. And then it was Contra. Uh, so I'll look into that while you continue. Cool. Uh, Fortnite, I I jumped uh, jumped ahead and purchased the Fortnite crew this morning. Um, I'd been playing quite a bit of Fortnite, uh, even solo during the day to do like the, the main like little quests and stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm playing a lot. I like it. Uh, I like it. Crew's worth it if you play. So, so I spent the money. I got crew. Uh, now I'm Lil gonna buy it tonight. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, I I only stopped because we stopped playing for a bit there. We were still playing, but not nearly as much to warrant having the crew. Yeah. But we certainly play, and I'm playing with family now too. So yeah, makes sense. yeah, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, I I certainly play enough to keep up with the crew, but to be honest, you know, I would have no problem canceling it and still playing like yeah. regular like we've done so and it's also very easy to cancel because i was like yeah. is this going to be one of those rigmaroles and last time i went to cancel it was like two buttons and done so yeah. i was like oh that's that's good yeah so um i'm excited to uh have some v bucks in my pocket and get some you know the battle pass even when it's all done in such a like a casino like way where even if you're not interested in what you're unlocking there's just something about the ooh i've got stars let me unlock this look what you got like it's like all right back back into the like the pot with all the other stuff i don't want four weeks in a row of excellent sound effects by do on the microphone we've had them there's another one for you bing bong boom 130 let's say 130 and 15 seconds Well, uh, that reminds me. So, so, um, yeah, I did that. And then I, I ended up, uh, splurging. I had all these V bucks now, of course. So I ended up splurging on the gritty and now Lil whip can right foot creep boom all around the hedgerow or whatever. I don't know how this right, lyrics something go. about a heater, like a gun. Oh, oh, it's some way the heater. Well, yeah. Lil whip is against guns and I, i've seen oh wait him. no he must be hard it must be hard to, to be it must be a he hard only stance. uses water bending people <laughs> um yeah so now there's all the other uh, elements in there today yeah i was playing a little around I'm with the, the earth one the earth one uh was kind of cool you can make a you can make like a barrier uh, and hide behind it and throw like oh. big chunks of uh rocks at oh people. you can oh i like that yeah I, it's cool i like that i think you're gonna like it's it a like lot stuff Neat stuff. Um, I I came upon a uh, I was playing earlier today solo and I came upon a um, a vault and I was going to go down and I took a peek down and somebody was in there already and they had used the the rock bending to put up a rock like I couldn't even get in <laughs> and there was just like a tiny little space that he could shoot out of and I was like well I'm getting out of here I know what I'm best at this was sent to me oh my god I love honey pop uh, for you. Uh, there's hold on. There's one more. Uh, they sent me this. <laughs> and they nice. label it attack on do. So nice. Perfect. There you go. Uh, I actually wanted to just quickly mention about that. I mean, I guess by now, if you listen to the show, you know I'm kind of a jerk, and I, I don't even mean like I don't mean after to be. Today's conversation earlier, this is the perfect time. Well, this is very it. revealing, right? Like, if anyone was listening to the the conversation we had earlier about those text messages, and I'm glad that you read them all because it's like a window into how insane <laughs> I I can be. You know, like it's very it's unreasonable to act the way that I do sometimes, or or to have the feelings that I do. So. Um, so, so yeah, I wanted to say about last week when I was talking about the anime music, I listened to that show again and I was like, I sound like an idiot. Like, I don't know what the heck I'm even talking about. Who cares if you wouldn't listen to the song in your car? Like, I don't know what point I was trying to make. It was so dumb. It was, it was basically like, I don't care for the song personally. So that's all I had to say, you know, but instead I went off on this. I would never listen to it in the car. They're so weird. It's, it's in Japanese and then in English. So what? It's a song. I, I don't know why. 
I got so upset about that. So it's it was weird. It's funny because you talked about that. And I'll tell you exactly how I felt and what I've been thinking repeatedly this week. I find so many things that you think really fascinating. And I mean that. And I want to like <laughs> study, talk to you more <laughs> about them and get into discussions about them. But I know the more it goes Whoa. on, the more annoyed you get, whether you realize it or not. And it results in stuff like yeah. that. So this week I was like, man, I really wish I could talk to him about this, that or the other thing. But I know he's going to get aggravated and I don't want to make that happen. So I was like, because I'd love to talk more about the Japanese song. That could be a whole thing on another show. I'm not doing it today, but I was like, I'd love, yeah. to, I'd love to know more. I'd love to see where that's all coming from. Yeah, I, I, I would love to know too, because I really don't know. Because I, you know, I'll say these things, and in my head, I think I'm being like clever or funny or something. And then when I re-listen to it, I'm like, well, this is like, this is like really cruel or <laughs> awful or like or ignorant or like you, you sound like a dummy. Like, who's this guy? You know, exactly. So, um. I mean, I remember saying all the stuff that I said, but like when I, I when you listen back to it, sometimes you're like, "What the heck was I even talking about?" And I I, I wonder, you know, I, I wonder if it's if it's I get frustrated because I don't have the words maybe necessarily to put it into like how I'm feeling, so I just get frustrated and and then say, you know, uh, then I dumb it down to, "Oh, it's bad," or I you know i don't like it so therefore it's bad or whatever so whatever i mean i'm sure anyone who listens to the show probably knows me enough by now to like take whatever i say with a grain of salt but if you don't uh a little bit of grain of salt if it's not too salty already oh anyways um, uh let me say this before i forget it and i'll close the okay uh email it was the contra stuff for vampire survivors it's called Operation Guns. It is paid DLC. It comes out May 9th, but it's two fifty. It's like nothing. Well, it's worth it. Um, I mean, if you're gonna play, it includes eleven characters, a ton of weapons, uh, twenty two weapons, including evolutions, and uh, huge new maps, stat manipulation, and more to be revealed. Later. Yeah, that's worth two fifty by a long shot. Yeah, their their DLC is very fairly priced. Uh, I but think there you the, go. Anyway. the last DLC I think was free even so they like, do a lot of they're free great. as well yeah I don't know that they've ever done DLC that costs more than 250 I think that's as high as they've gone it's probably not even them doing it too right they got it they like oh Capcom for the uh, oh uh, yeah that's a, that's a good point uh, uh, Konami but uh, yeah I don't know what Konami's cut is but they're making a penny off of it unbelievable uh, so yes what else are you playing uh, I played a little bit of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth I am Oh my god, I'm Loving so it. slow. Like I I probably 4 days I didn't play this week. I I mean, I couldn't even bring myself to play it. I'm I am just crawling through it. I'm about 64 hours and I'm just I don't know. I'm kind of like I'm kind of like checked out on it. Uh I can I can barely bring myself to boot it up for like 30 minutes an hour at a time. And uh like I said most days this week I didn't even play. So I'm I'm just like starting to get kind of bogged down um with even thinking about it walton bog walton boggins uh, that's great <laughs> i uh it's it's funny because back in i mean we're we're old we're old guys now but but back in high school when this came out for us i remember everyone who talked about it it was like this is a 60 hour game you don't understand. And I remember telling my mom, mom, no, you don't understand. This game is 60 hours long. I'll leave like, you alone for 60 hours. Like it. You know, uh, it's, it's not, I mean, obviously there were games that were long back then. We just didn't know about them, or at least I didn't, but like, that was like a huge deal back then. And yeah, maybe it's not a 60 hour game looking back, uh, but it is a huge game. And that was like big time for me. Like, and we didn't really like, I mean, at least for me, we weren't thinking about games as like like time you play like length of time in the game necessarily I I wasn't you know I wasn't yeah. like playing Super Mario 64 and being like oh this is going to I'm going to be doing this for 40 hours yeah. like I didn't think of it like that and it wasn't until Final Fantasy 7 came out that I was like this is epic it's 60 hours it's a thing it was in the like the magazines like I had the the uh I had like the the walkthrough like Prima walkthrough or whatever it's called Prima so it's funny to like look back on that time in our lives and think about 
the trivialness of video games in a way where it was all about fun back then. And at least for me, it was. And I didn't I don't realize when the change came that it was like I want it to be bloody, violent, graphic. I want the graphics to be top notch. I want it to be uh, like so dark and I want it to be 60 hours long and I want it to, you know, and I don't, I don't know. I was, I got preoccupied somewhere down the line with other things. And it wasn't until I slowly started coming back to the Nintendo realm and playing some games for the sake of playing the games that I, I, I don't know where I'm really going with this, but like, I, I guess, I guess it's just funny because like I've put 64 hours into this game and I'm not even having fun. You yeah. know, like I'm at a point where I'm not having fun anymore, like not even a little bit. Well, and that's yeah. why I can't even turn the game on. And it's like, what does that even, who cares if it's 8 million hours yeah. long if you're not going to enjoy it? Well, back then that was like, like you said, we didn't really hear games marketed that way. So it was like a selling point and it was exciting to be like, oh my God, 60 hours of things to do. Like, that's amazing. That was just like exciting in and of itself. But yeah, you know, nowadays that's... But now it's nothing. like, now it is nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Like, it, like somebody telling me that a game is long is not going to get me excited. Yeah. But somebody telling somebody on the internet that a game is short is going to get that person upset that it's not yes. longer. Yes. And like longer and longer. And it's like, but how is the gameplay? Is it fun? Are you going to have fun? I'd rather play a game for three hours and have fun than play a game for 64 yeah. hours and talk every week about how it's driving me crazy. People were all upset that Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown was like, what? 20 to 30 hours because that's too long for a metroidvania and i'm like well i can't i don't understand man that's it's crazy it's crazy i uh, thought that was about perfectly length i mean length. hey if a game is too long like that but you enjoy playing it set it down for like play it for 10 hours and set it down move away from it for a little while well, i don't I, like I, treat I don't each think boss fight like the end you know and then come back to it and oh my gosh I you mean, got like four games out of it if thing. you're if you're enjoying a game i don't think you would find it to be too long ever you wouldn't be like boy this game's great too long though you wouldn't be thinking about yeah. that you know it, it'd be it, boy this game's great you'd actually you'd actually be like oh god is this the last chapter i don't yeah, want this yeah. to end like but i i mean i felt that way with uh okami a little bit because like you felt it was great but it was too long yeah because i i got to a point where i'm like i'm ready to reach the end now and then like you get to another area and you're like wow i still have more to do don't i and like wow and then you get to the end of that and you're like this is still going and like i don't know because that's what happened the first time i played through it and then i put it down and i never went back to it and then when it came out was it on the switch it is. Uh, on the it Switch. was released on the Switch. It's I on bought the it and I played through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Then, and I really enjoyed it, and I was glad I did. But like, I, I was playing through it, and I got to that same point, and it wasn't like something happened in it. It was just like I got to a point where I was like, the game could end here, and I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. But then I kept playing, and I said, you know, I still enjoyed it. But like, so do you feel it was too long? I feel like, yeah, I feel like it was kind of. I don't know if. Because it wasn't, I don't really remember very well. But maybe it could have, like, that was like two games into one kind of thing. Like, they could have split it into two or something. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's it. I got nothing. <laughs> you had something. I just, no, I just remember that, that that's how I felt. Like, I was playing it. And I was like, yeah. I remember you talking about how you, but I, felt I mean, it. again, I loved the game. I was really enjoying it. I remember the art and everything, the music, everything about that game is I'm on board with 100%. So, yeah, then but, it, it's more like then the, the things that you were doing in the game or the pacing of the game lagged, which made you not enjoy it as much. So, if the like quality was maintained the whole way, you probably wouldn't feel it's too long because you wouldn't yeah. be getting tired of doing something. Or maybe I don't know the pacing or how things kind of roll out, but like maybe I was like getting new abilities in a well paced like time frame. And then, then you maybe you, you get everything you need and then you just have to continue playing with everything. So then like at that point, it's like, no, actually th like the story changes and you go into a completely different place. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that, you know, I don't think I even reached that the first time through. 
but like that gets a little hard sometimes because you're like i'm like so close it's the, it's the same kind of thing it's happened in other games where like you get to like right at the very end you're like right there and then something happens and the big bad boss is like oh now i'm bigger and now i'm gonna go over here now you gotta go through four more lands to catch me and you're like wow i thought i was at the end and now i gotta keep keep chasing this jerk down <laughs> like i'm gonna take a break and then sometimes you don't come back i don't so then yeah that's where the game sours for you uh, that's what i'm saying if it you know if you're having fun the whole time you wouldn't complain that a game is too long so you know a game gets a complaint of being too long when there's parts that drag so the only issue i had i think with prince of persia was i was like struggling with some like in a metroidvania you get all your abilities you know what you need to do but you're like i'm not seeing where to go next i don't like i'm not seeing where this new ability is actually gonna, uh, so, is, is gonna get used. so like yeah i mean so, so then, then people for people like that then yeah it becomes hard i spent several hours just traversing back and forth trying to find out what i was supposed to do next because i didn't want to just put it on the map um and that gets to be a like a little bit of a whatever not i don't want to say slog but like you, you just get a little worn down because you're just like you know just doing the same things over and over and over again going into the same area and getting my booty handed to me well yeah, but like you said, there are ways in the game to avoid getting stuck in that loop, too. You can have people or do things in the game that will point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So it's becomes a decision of do I want to keep doing this or do I, I'm not having fun anymore? Let me eliminate that and know where to go. And my apologies, uh, but that's I think that same thing happened to me with Symphony of the Night. Like back. What? I think I played it on the Xbox, like the original Xbox or something, or maybe the 360 it was on. They released it. And, uh, what is a man? Right? 360? 360. Um, I got to a point where I was like, don't know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to have to stop. Like, I'm going to have to take a break. And then I just never went back to it. Hey, I borrowed that game from somebody and beat it and found out a month later that I didn't really beat it. I was like, what? There's an upside down castle? What yeah. are you talking about? I gotta wear the glasses when I fight that guy. What's going on here, man? You didn't ha you didn't own that one. That's interesting. No, because that was uh, you know I guess middle of high school, so I wasn't you know I didn't have a lot of money to spend, um, and I think I didn't get the PlayStation until close to when that released because my parents were like, "We're done buying systems; they're too expensive." So I had to like scrap together money to get the PlayStation in general. So, uh. Man, what did I buy on play? Like, I didn't buy Metal Gear Solid. I borrowed that from somebody. You had that, uh, you were like that first person bunny game where you. Oh, jumping. I bought Jumping Flash. That's right. Yeah, I was going to say, I had Jumping Flash. I bought Parappa. Um, I bought Oddworld. I bought um, Crash Bandicoot. Intelligent Q. Uh, I bought Intelligent Q. Really? Yeah, yeah. And definitely. all these games, I mean, they're all great games, but like over for you, over a Castlevania game, that's impressive. Yeah, I don't know. I, th that must have been. I just didn't have the money at the time, and nothing that I wanted to trade in at the time because I would. I was obviously and still am very interested in Castlevania, so I got no explanation for that one. I already, uh, borrowed it from Bobby Lawyer. He had it. Oh, interesting. Um, yes, and uh, then when I went to his house to return it, he made me sit down with him and his brother to play the Spice Girls game on PlayStation. And I said, "Why do you have this?" And I said, "We don't want to talk about." It. <laughs> Well, we played it. We played it. Was it fun? No, but it was funny. It's like they have the Castlevania Symphony of the Night and they're playing this. Two games. Again. Two games. Uh, the best of both worlds. Um, anything else you played? No, that's uh, that's my that's my playing this week. Uh, RMC, what'd you play? Uh, only played two things. Thank you for asking. I played Fortnite. I've uh, been having fun, of course. Um, very excited for the new Avatar things that are in there right now. Can't wait to try them out. Hopefully tonight um and then i've been playing more final fantasy 7 last week you asked me if i got to the part where you dress up yet and i said no well this week i'm here to tell you no i still did not get there even though i put in another five hours with the game oh my god i am at the part where i just finished up the um <laughs> it was really funny because of how bad it was you're at that school with all the little stupid kids and they're like there's a weird man in a robe wandering around in the dump and uh, we don't let adults back here, but you're cool. So you go. 
and you go like fight the things out there and they're like hooray and whatever and you come back and you never see the robed guy until you're on your way out and then he's like <gasps> like wanders out and like touches you when you see sephiroth and all that and then he just after that he's like and like stumbles away and they're like well, okay that's there goes that guy you know what's <laughs> driving me nuts that little section of the game is like the epitome of the worst of the worst for me because you have the little kid that dresses up like the moogle yeah to sell you things he's talking to you while the goddamn record player behind him is blasting the song <laughs> can you turn it off nope so he's like uh Koopo, come by my whatever and this music's like bah, 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 bah. the whole time you're there and i'm like this is insanity and you got to talk to him because he's got the key for the special thing that and the guy's like oh my wife i can't go see my wife because she's in the graveyard and there's monsters there so i'm like i got I, it, it was horrible all the things you remember from the original Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you know what I am appreciating more? How much Cloud, for the most part, hates talking to... Well, he hates talking to everybody, but he really hates talking to the kids. Yeah. Where, like, the kids are like, go to the go to our hideout and save us from this old road, man. He's like, I need 5,000 gil. And the kids are like, what do you mean? Five? But then he warms up to him and whatever. But I was like, oh, all right, Cloud, all right. Um, But I did have... The most fun that I've had in this game so far, by far. Mm. Can you guess what it was? Uh, you know, probably not. Only because every single bit you just told me about, I forgot is it, that's even in the game. Because, so, like, uh, anyways, no, I don't. It's, I have no clue. It's in that section. It's a mini game. Hmm. I wish I remembered what the name of the game was. It's a really dumb name, but it's like, box breaker i knew it was going to be the box breaking thing where the girl's like we got this game we play called box breaker do you want to try and it's like why not i'm already here that. and it's like you know break through the boxes and break the box timers and i was like okay and it starts up and i was like oh this is kind of fun and then like you're going through and i got like a high score but not the best high score and i was like take more gill i want to do this and i spent like 45 minutes playing that i was like this is so much fun i love this but then I got the high score and you can't get any higher. I don't know if maybe later they do another one, but I was like, this was the best part of the game for me so far. And then I stopped that and then I went to go do another mission. And it was like the highest of highs to the lowest Ugh. of lows. The guy's like, I don't know, some side quest where the guys talk about there's these five things wandering around in the area. You've already been through four times. And he's like, you got to go find them. And I, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's rough. There's, um, the area of uh, of Aerith's house is nice looking. Yeah, that's that pretty was very area. nicely realized. I like very looking nice. at that sentimental seeing that. That was nice. Uh, going out and having to pick the flowers for the basket to give to the kids. Not not exactly a fun time, but yeah. being, it, being there and seeing it was nice. Well, having it like all those areas that are familiar that they realized, I think they did an amazing job with. But yes. that can only take you so far, you know, when you're going around the same area looking for innocuous crap you know when yeah you really just want to move along you know what's really funny about this section um you're following Aerith the whole time because she's taking you to her house and you meet her mom and she wants you to stay for dinner and all that crap but you stop at the school first and all the kids are like oh Aerith's here whatever so Aerith's like i gotta go talk to the head mad whatever the teacher the daycare person and as she's walking through the town it was almost like everything was programmed to be in the worst spot possible because she's walking through chairs and through stools and over boxes and like things are just flying everywhere and she's not changing how she walked. And I'm like, such a nice looking, well-realized game. And no one was like, maybe we shouldn't have her walk through chairs and boxes yeah. like this. I, I was like, like I through them like she's a ghost. No, like, just you like, know, it'd be like seeing a table in your way just and just into walking it, into it and like and it pushing like it, flying. not touching it. And it goes flying out it, of the way. The, yeah. This, I don't remember this from the first game, but in the second game, it's even worse because even though you only have a party of three in battles, all eight of your party members are on screen walking with you wherever you go. And it's it, I mean, it, and it doesn't make sense in a lot of the areas. So you're on top of each other yeah. and you're walking and you can hear stuff like being like, because yeah. you got eight people, you got a stampede of people yeah. behind you. And each one's freakier than the last. You got the giant Mr. T with the gun hand and you got the talking dog with the fire tail. And like 
and and like they're just like <sighs> crashing through stuff and you're just like i'm just in this town yeah. like just trying to walk through. it works it it's makes ridiculous. less sense realistically in the old game where you just see mostly yourself and then when battles happen everybody's out yeah but it works better just from a game perspective it's it's great because if you talk to somebody the two members of your party come out of cloud yeah and then you've got the three characters standing there and if they have to speak they can speak but in the new game it's all eight of them run up to somebody and they're all on top of you and then you turn around they all got to get out of your way and then the it's worse when you get chocobos because yeah you see cloud's chocobo and you get on it but once you do eight chocobos magically appear and you've got eight people riding on <laughs> chocobos and they don't even come back so like you're, you see cloud but you see two you see like the other two people in your party here too so like it's th there's just so much on screen chocobo butt and you can't even see where you're running like everything about this is just it's just so cluttered i mean what are they doing i am feeling it's cluttered in this one and i'm obviously my party isn't anywhere near the size of yours in that one so uh i was climbing up a ladder and Aerith did something weird and she climbed it like a split second after me. So we just merged into one person basically and we're climbing together. I was like, uh, yeah. how is this stuff in the game? I don't know. Well, that's, that's funny. Cause there's parts, there's parts in the game. Like I was telling you, like all uh, open world games, they have those towers that you have to climb and do yeah. something or whatever. So you find a tower. First of all, you climb up the tower and all eight of them have to follow you up this ladder even the dog like red 13 is like like a dog climbing a You'd be like hey wait down there i got this i'll be back i mean you should see him ride a chocobo it's hilarious i don't I, want it to I, change i saw a clip of it online, but it's like yeah. it's like what the heck are they doing <laughs> what are they doing is the million dollar question uh so yeah that i put in uh i'm officially at 13 plus hours with the game so i don't know how much more i got to go but I am feeling like you are feeling about the sequel. It's like it's like I'm sitting down to go to work, but I'm too far into it now. So, well, it's cra it's crazy because I was thinking like when I was thinking about all those hours put into video games or thinking about games as hours just recently, I saw that I put like 270 hours in a Tears of the Kingdom and like every single moment of that was fun yeah was awesome and it didn't feel like 270 hours not at all i would have told you way less if you just asked i can't even think of one time when i turned that game off because i wanted to turn it off i was turning it off because i had to work or i had to go to bed that's because you're of your own agency in that game you go and do whatever you want for as long as you want in something like well especially remake that's not the case you're funneled down a very specific path and i don't mind linear games at all but what you're doing isn't fun so yeah whatever 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 we've ragged on final fantasy 7 remake uh, and rebirth a lot it's lately not fun. Uh, it seems like most of you guys know that you know we're not knocking people who enjoy it we're just trying to understand the people who enjoy it and we're airing our gripes and you know things might be played up a bit for comedic value or we're joking around or anything but we're you know we're not coming down on those who enjoy those games i wish i could be one of them i'm just really struggling to find out what it is and why how much of the reviews from critics and and gamers together was fueled by nostalgia and not wanting to say something hurtful about something that's very meaningful to them and how much was it like genuine feelings i i i don't know and i don't know that i'll ever know but yeah, the, there's that. so many changes to the story, and I know that it's you know as the story progresses and gets bigger, they're going to have to make changes. But uh, you know that's the that's where my my biggest gripe with like the remake part is. It's like you remade it to to make the story worse and to make you know the gameplay bloated. Like why? Yeah, so. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. We could have multiple podcasts dedicated to just this topic, even just about Final Fantasy VII, but. I don't know. We're uh, well, especially me. I'm in the minority. We got questions. Send your questions to go ninpod at gmail.com. Where? Go ninpod at gmail.com. They can be about Nintendo video games in general or whatever the hell, hell. you want. Continuing on with the autumnal Blake, his next five questions. What is Reggie doing right now? Uh, What's wrong with you? He's pulling out another slice from his secret never ending stash of Bigfoot pizzas and living the dream. <laughs> He's he's putting a pin on his lapel and he's picking up his phone to X on X. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Making a legendary X on X. He's playing. Uh, he's got to get back to playing Animal Crossing Pocket on his 
Game Boy, whatever. Man, uh, the sentiment is there, and that's all that matters. Uh, yes, Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. Uh, have you owned a Game & Watch? Yes. Yeah, thanks to Nikki Hill, I own one. Do I? You own one? Oh, I guess that's, yeah. What do you mean you guess? It's a game. I thought watch. they were fold they folded up. I guess they didn't they were like tiger. They were all like there tiger. Were some that folded. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You own a game of watch, yes. Yeah. And I have I owned have the a game Super of watch. Mario one that was like the limited edition, which you can still find all over the place. And uh the Legend of Zelda one, which I still haven't opened. We're that all is, game that of watch. That is funny how here. like certain things they're like, this is gonna be limited. Well, and see, that's the thing. When they say when things say collectors or limited edition. They're they're tagging that on there, and they're making a bunch of them. I mean, also Nintendo, like with uh, Super Mario All Stars, when they did that for the Wii, and that was like a limited thing, and it sold really well, and it sold out, and then they were like, you know what, a lot of people want this, and they did like a second printing of it, and now they're still on shelves. So. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, there, it's like there's a method to their madness. Uh, name a round Mario character. Uh, I I won't go with the most obvious. I'll steal another one. Uh, uh Cactar. He's round. He's a whole bunch of rounds together. Mm -hmm. Same with the Roly Poly guy. What's his name? The caterpillar thing. Wiggler. Sure. All right, Wiggler. Yeah. The Wiggler. Uh, he's a he, um, a wart. He's roundish. He's a, are we going for like perfect round? How about uh, what's that? Um, the most obvious one, the is... key master, uh, the the from oh, Super Fanto. Mario, Fanto. yeah, Fanto. There yes, you go. that's that. Don't get more round than that. That's a great one. I was gonna say Boo, but Fanto's more oh, round yeah, than Boo. boo. Oh, They're both yeah. very round, but Fanto's literally just a circle. So perfect. Yeah, uh, I was trying to think of the bird guys with the little orange feet, but I don't remember what they're called. Uh, have you farted during this podcast episode? No. Not this no. one. Wow. We are very is, rare. That is rare for me. And finally, which video game location would you like to go to for a holiday? Oh, well, since all I think about is food now, I want to go someplace that's going to have great oh, food. Man, but you don't want to go to food? a video game food level. No, because that I don't think you could eat the levels. You go, what, you what's, that one, what's that one from uh whatchamacallit? Where they're what the hell? I don't even know what games are. What are what are video <laughs> games? What's that one from what you call it? Super Mario Odyssey, where you gotta get cookie, to the top cookie, to where they're making the Gallic oh uh super odyssey, yeah. Where they're uh, making uh, the yeah. stew. You got a stew going. I, I don't remember the name because I really don't like the level. Well, we'd have to go to I mean, well, you wouldn't have to, but I would have to go to Delfino, Delfino Island. And uh, visit all the the cool things there. I mean, it's nice. It's nice. It's beautiful there. Got some nice fruit there too. Sunset Beach, yeah. Noki Noki Beach. That'd be uh, real nice. I can't think of any video game other than solitaire. Solitaire. So I'll go to. A I want to go to somewhere to play solitaire. solitaire. Um, man, where would I want to go for real? Um, that's you know somewhere in a Kirby game would be really nice. There's lots of nice beaches and stuff in Kirby games. There's lots. But you don't of... like beach. You don't like the beach though. I don't like the beach, but the, like if there was a beach that looked like a Kirby beach, I, I would want to go to that beach. There's there's not. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of something with really good food. You know what? How about I just just for the sake of being there, I want to go to uh, what's the, what's the uh, do what's the name of the town? in earthbound after four side it's the beachside uh it's the beachside city with all the nice shops and the places to eat yeah i know exactly what you're talking about and of course i can't somebody in the chat maybe can't remember the name of that for the life of me what a beautiful puppy uh hi nico darunio good to see you yeah that dog is beautiful what is the name of that place well, anyway uh that's our choices uh summerton have... or summer summerton or isn't it summer summers summers boy it's such a simple name and we couldn't think of it there no, you go thank funny. you yeah, isn't it summers Perfect. summers thank you nico Darunia. yes i would like to go there that would be fun eat that um what the hell does that lady make for you that makes you lose your mind she <laughs> makes some kind of dessert is it a cake a rainbow cake or something and she's like yeah, take this and it is a cake, and then you go it? you fly over to uh i'm gonna call him Pooh because that's his name but i don't remember what you named bruce names. and bruce there we go of course honestly bruce. actually if uh if i could 
if I could fly like the character in the game, the game, the game, I would go to the wherever that place is from a short hike, and because that's a, that's a peaceful, lovely place. Uh, it's a nice place. Very nice. Uh, we also have a Patreon question. Do did you know that you can join the Patreon? For a dollar. For a dollar. Spaniel did, and they asked this question. Have you guys seen Tim Heidecker's On Cinema series? That show is such a fun watch, worth checking out. The Oscar specials are some of the funniest content I've seen. If you haven't seen it, what are some of your favorite comedy series, any recent releases, or ongoing series? We're all fan of fans of Tim Heidecker here. Uh, I know you've seen On Cinema. I cinema. haven't really seen much of it, only like clips. I have actually never watched it. Watched it, But you have seen it. Just clips, like it. just yeah. Same with me. Pieces, yeah, pieces. I've watched full episodes, but I've seen more clips than Where's full it even episodes. In? It's on YouTube. I mean, it's on Adult Swim's channel too, but it's on YouTube. Um, and I follow on TikTok as well, so I get stuff often. Yes, it is very funny. And uh Tim has lately been cracking up like breaking character a lot from Greg Turkington, because Greg says a lot of stuff that Tim just cannot fight from laughing at. So but he plays it off in a very Tim way. So it's great. great. Yeah, that, that, I mean, Tim and Eric, I can't think of any comedy duo that I can't think of anybody in comedy that I like better. Just their style of weird and funny and experimental does it for me with everything they've done from Tom goes to the mayor all the way up to their most recent stuff. It's a very specific type of weird as well. Cause I've seen comedy since that have tried to do similar I, I don't know if they're trying to copy them, but they do like similar weird stuff. And it doesn't like there's something about the secret sauce that Tim and Eric yeah. have where it 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 seems so like it's, like it just happened. DJ Doug Pound. And Vic Berger, too. Yeah, that those four together. Yeah. DJ Doug Pound and Vic Berger working with Tim and Eric. They have that secret sauce. Yeah, it's a uh, boom. Tom Scarrett. Man, is it great. <laughs> those episodes of uh, Tim and Eric's awesome show. They're what? Twelve minutes an episode. The amount of laughs, and I mean like tears from laughter that I would have from those episodes are nothing has ever made me laugh that much in such a small amount of time. The Simpsons certainly makes me laugh, but Tim and Eric, I cry laughing at. But then then you also oh, had Tim and Eric stories. bedtime stories where it was like absurd, like the most absurd horror bits, but incredible storytellers and like really talented filmmakers, filmmakers. Yeah. amazing editing and filmmaking they're they're musicians their music is great tim's tim's serious music is great his funny music is great his Find serious music is also funny uh the the uh, beef house is a totally different beef thing house that was hilarious amazing. too yeah. like they they are so talented i they mean really seriously are. when bedtime stories came out it was like they're actually really talented and they could act if they really wanted to. They yeah. could do serious acting and stuff if they really wanted to. I mean, they've tried before and a few things, but it's tough. It's tough to like take them seriously because it's freaking Tim and Eric. I think that's the problem. I mean, Tim on his podcast is hilarious, but he's playing Tim. He's playing yes. this version of himself. That's well, like, I know you didn't like the, the, did you even, you didn't watch, did you watch the YouTube special? What you do? oh Tim's, oh oh where he's doing a different you character. don't like that, that stand up that's, that's I didn't yeah I didn't care for the stand up that right. much did that you YouTube watch it though I watched half of it I think I, 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 I think I, I went back and watched it tried to watch it twice I watched the whole thing and I really I mean like that, that stuff is yeah but watching like, him like in character I know it's all in character but him like suffer when things aren't going but that's the other so thing bad. it's it's very Andy Kaufman I think it's yes like I don't know I watch some andy kaufman stuff i'm not a huge like i don't know everything that he had done but like it's almost like tim does it better at times or whatever where like that awkward like you know this is only a joke for me and it like yeah. whatever and i'm just gonna make fun of all of you sitting in the audience and like until people get in on the joke and then it becomes funnier for other people but like he will go out and purposely bomb and it's the funniest thing that I'll see. Like he'll just completely throw away a set. I, I can, I've seen some Andy Kaufman things that I like and have laughed at, but I think the big difference maker for me is Andy Kaufman was like Andy Kaufman 24 seven. Like he was just always that. And Tim and Eric, 
can be regular people like outside of it. They're not always doing a shtick. Like they do their comedy stuff and then they act regular. And I think I appreciate that more because with Kaufman, I'm like, this is making me uncomfortable because uncomfortable because I think he's just like this all the time. Mm -hmm. This he's just a weird guy. Tim and Eric have weird senses of humor, but they are normal people too. And that makes me appreciate it in a different way. So I mean there's commercials from episodes of Tim and Eric that I remember, still remember, because I would laugh at the, com like a, a 10 second commercial that commercial. I would laugh at, like uh, a baby's pinus. And uh, <laughs> me, Momo, Tim Heidecker was in a commercial. And uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, the bedtime stories, um, Lovely Linda, the line from Lovely Linda. <laughs> and uh, th they showed, I I was, I remember being so excited for an ep the episode of Bedtime Stories where Tim was the heavier guy who was going into the exercise pod. Uh -huh. Oh my god! And they, oh, yeah. the one little clip they had was the spike that came. Fall, spike's gonna go my ass. That's exactly the clip I was crying from laughing <laughs> at. That. I'm gonna fall. The spike's gonna go right up my ass. <laughs> I laughed at that every time. Man, was that so good? Yeah, Tim and Eric is something for all of us at the table. We just really, really love it. I don't think we can even name anything it's else. It's great. It's great. There's something so wonderful about. Uh, like humor that can hit that low brow, but still at some level be, I don't want to say intellectual, but like the people behind it, like Smart. are, are smarter than yeah. you'd think. And so like, I'm not, it's not like an attempt at a gotcha or anything. I, I genuinely can't understand how uh, there's parts of the Tim and Heidecker stuff where like they're pranking people or like, or like Steve Brule is like interviewing somebody and he's obviously just like, you know, joking around, but the people he's interviewing are taking it seriously. And you like that, but then you don't, you, you get really uncomfortable with other scenarios like Nathan Fielder stuff. Yeah. Like there, it's just, there's something unless it's again, like an Andy Kaufman thing where Nathan Fielder's like, he's like this so much where you're like, you're just uncomfortable There's the whole time. something about the Nathan Fielder stuff. Cause I, I can recognize that that's very, that's another, on another level. That's very another funny. thing for me that like, I never watch. It just watch. makes me feel so uncomfortable I think the and thing, it's supposed to. I think the thing with his is it might be that Nathan Fielder plays it so flat and it is played 100% for awkwardness. Whereas like, Steve Brule, plus he's so over the top right. dumb. You're like, how are people not picking up That's that this man's doing a thing. character? That's definitely but one. But the thing, of it. the thing that I like about Nathan Fielder is the long game that's played there, because there's payoffs like years later, kind of like I think that's what he also does. I, I think that. yeah, I think for me it's more. Steve Brule seems silly and fun, yes. and Nathan Fielder seems like he's playing a joke on these people. Right. And like, that's what I don't, I don't, I don't like when people are getting like, like the joke is on them. Whereas like when Steve Brule is like being a goof with some doctor who has no idea who he is, it doesn't feel mean for some reason. I mean, maybe I'm wrong and looking at it differently, but it's kind of like, you know, it was just a little afternoon and they shot it and it was it. Yeah. But like Nathan Fielder probably he, planned told some the people at demise the for somebody for six oh, months to like mess with them. Yeah. And it's like, as clever as well, this is not, and as funny as this is, lives, like, it's just it just makes me feel so awkward. He's not and... ruining people's lives, sure, but he's certainly like to a degree messing with people's lives. Like he's well meddling I mean, in the people's rehearsal. Lives. Whew, that is an intense one. See, I love the rehearsal. I, I love Nathan Fielder. It is difficult for me to watch sometimes, but I do love and appreciate what he does. The rehearsal, I thought, was an amazing show. But I totally get if somebody's like, Did I can't both finish that the rehearsal. Yeah. yeah. And I, I actually, I, I, I want to watch it again. I haven't done it yet. Rehearsal I, is definitely one of the most interesting things. I've it's, ever seen. It and it has like, moments where it's really funny. I'm getting like some goosebumps right now just thinking about it. Just because the experience that I had week after week watching that, where I just like you get pulled deeper and deeper and deeper into this situation. And like you think like, this is it. You can't go. And he takes you another level deeper. And it's like really thought provoking. And it's like really and that crazy. show. That show in particular is really thought and provoking. Then, and he does go ways that you never expect. And so. then classic fashion for me. I have my own thoughts and I'm not like a really deep thinker. But then I watch 
other people's like video essays and stuff about things. And I watched one about the rehearsal and it like blew my mind in a whole other level. Like, again, it's this person's kind of opinion, but it's, it's on point for everything. And it's just like this whole idea of like reality television and everything else. And like, he's turning just really makes you think about things in a completely different level, which happens, but I don't realize it's happening. Um, and so when it comes to like, intelligent and funny that stuff is like it's beyond me i don't know it's it's a whole other level same i don't know thing, how he does same he thing does. with for me how to with john wilson is a, a top of my list um and i know i've tried to get you guys to watch it you guys are not Countless interested times. i've watched it like is, six episodes i'm not not into it but it's just i can't get enough of it and there's three seasons and that's where it's it's done now but like oh what's his man name? so good there's another guy i haven't even watched the full third season he used to have a show on adult swim he's hey, also Piper. very deadpan i can't uh, i'll have to look at ben up. stein uh piro per <laughs> para joe um, para joe yes Pera. i love joe para i too. couldn't i tried watching that because it hbo suggested it because of the Nathan for you and all that stuff. And I was like, is this for real? See, Joe Parra. Because he is really deadpan. But that's the good part about Joe Parra. He's not doing it at other people's expenses. So if it's that's all not your thing, it's all scripted. Well, I don't know if what he's saying is scripted, but everybody that is in the show with him is scripted. Yeah. But just his personality and vibe, I love him and I love that show. And I've watched some of his stand up. And he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would be good for stand up, but I laugh just as much as that too. So he's really I, interesting. I um I'd never heard of him, and he was on he was interviewed on Tim's podcast, mm -hmm. and I was only listening to the audio, so I couldn't see him either. And and they have him on, and he's on the phone, and he comes on, and he's just like, and like Tim like bigs him up, like makes this big thing, and then he comes on, and he's just like uh hi tim i can't do his voice and he's like hi tim uh, a friend of mine just got here so i gotta go and it was i'm telling you it was so funny it was so funny and like the way tim reacted to it and everybody there and i didn't know if it was real or not i thought this guy was real he stays on the phone and he the stayed time. on the phone for like 40 minutes and every like five minutes he'd be like oh I, my friend's in the other room he <laughs> wants to he, he came to new york city i told him i'd take him out to dinner like and it was like so dumb. It wasn't even fun. Like it wasn't even a joke, but it was so funny the way. And then the way it just kept going on and on. And like, uh, and by the end, I was like, I got to look up who this guy is. And I ended up watching some of his stand up because he was so interesting. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen his stand up. You got to see his adult swim show. It's another. That's, I watched the episode. first episode oh God, where like so he good. basically he has like a rock and I don't even know the anything more about it. But I was just like like the pacing or whatever because he's just the oh it is very slow guy, paced, i was just yeah. like oh i don't know if i could do this yeah it's very slow paced i think the 12 minute format really works with his pacing because i don't know if you could do a half hour but yes i i love it as that show goes on i bring in more people and it goes like on road trips all over and like it, it gets a lot more uh well it's funny but it gets a lot more interesting with what he does you said road trip that's the other thing with nathan that movie. nathan for you the very last episode is like a mo is like a film like a documentary about this other guy and it's an incredible like and another it's an incredible it's one episode but it's a it's a longer episode or yeah. whatever but like as far as like a standalone story and everything it shocked me whatever blew me away they're all it's in the same so universe and they're all like different yeah. extremes but well, they all share a common thread and yeah, yeah they're and they, they all I mean, they they're, all, I think all produce, produce each other's. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I think Nathan Fielder, right? Was he produced some Tim, Tim and Eric stuff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there you go. That's our comedy stuff, and we don't have music, and that's the end. I can't imagine we have anything else. So I guess that's it. Yeah. Uh, son of a gun. Oh wait, dude, you could probably like you've been doing really well. Why don't you sing some tunes and we'll guess them? Uh, yeah, quick, 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 quick. All right, well then I guess that's it. I, uh, I don't. Um, thanks for watching and uh, everybody have a safe week. Hopefully listening. you didn't look if you were in the path of uh, the eclipse. You didn't look at the sun very long. 
Man, and, this uh, is like a first. See, I can't do this. Can't do it. <laughs> Do's views. Oh! It's never news. Rumor of the week with Do Michaels. Man, came in at the oh. last second. With Do Michaels. <laughs> You're killing me. Here. So uh, this just came across my desk. It's not video game related. It's about Do's views. Um, oh. There's a rumor that it's going to be going forward. It's going to be called uh, Do's views starring Do Michaels. Wow. That's what the rumor is. Yeah. Wow. That's that's a joke. Rumor though that one's not true, believe it or not. Is that, oh, wait, we already so, know it's not true. Wait, no, wait. This one's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Right, and the, my favorite part is you're confused. Yet it's literally about your thing. <laughs> it's, uh, well, the spiders and flies—they talk in code sometimes. I had the week off, so this, this is <laughs> this is coming from me, which is why it's a problem. Everybody deserves vacation, so I get it. Well, uh, now we know. Thanks for telling us that true or not true story. You got it. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, any little after show? Anything? Or are we? No, I kind of forgot we were on a podcast. We we're talking about all those comedy. Shows. We really went off Sorry on, about that, on everything yeah. not podcast related. So, I mean, I had fun chatting. Well, that's what this show's about. We uh, and like I said. Nintendo news was light this week. I mean, we spent a good time talk or a good amount of time talking about Final Fantasy, like we have been for the past few weeks. We talked about the Fallout TV show, which is definitely video game related. I mean, I don't worry about I any of that stuff at all. To just get some of my madness oh. out there, to be honest. Can we go I back want... to that question? I just farted. Uh, Mark that one. Oh, okay. Podcast show. is over. I'll make that, uh, whoever's doing the timestamps this week, please make that a timestamp. <laughs> Uh, put it into like a jar. We'll save it for next week. You got anything around? <laughs> like this? uh, like Stimpy? No, <laughs> no, I was gonna eat those. Like Stimpy did. Extra spicy. Uh, you were gonna say something? I was just saying I was glad that I you you read those text messages out and we got a little bit of my madness out there because I think a little transparency goes a long way. <laughs> uh, I don't want anyone out there thinking I'm some like uh, un uh, dis unheartful jerk. Never, no one would ever think you're unheartful ever. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, then we're gonna get out of here. It's a, it's a Friday. Uh, hopefully, you're out of work. If you're watching this live or you watch it tonight, and you got the whole weekend ahead of you, you can do whatever the hell you want. So hey, what the happened? weekend starts on Fridays. That's right. That's we Fridays, all agreed. Fridays the first the weekend best day. day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Play some games. Hang out with friends and family. Rest. Relax. You deserve it. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, Goodbye everybody. everybody. Goodbye. George, have a great week. Ooh, I waited because I didn't know if it was going to happen. It happened.